we present Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, dramatised for broadcasting by Constance Cox, with Paul Daneman, Gudrun Yore, and Patricia Gallimore. Wuthering Heights. My name is Ellen Dean, and I, perhaps, of all the folk who live there, am best fitted to tell the story of that strange, gaunt farmhouse called Wuthering Heights. I lived there in all for more than 20 years. But I must tell the story as I saw it happen when I first went to work at Wuthering Heights. A girl not much older than Miss Cathy or her constant companion, Heathcliff. And a day which stands out in my memory is a Sunday in the year 1781. We three had been banished to the attic by Mr. Hindley to listen to old Joseph reading from the Bible. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. <laughs> Miss Cathy, you bent paying attention. Yes, I am, Joseph. And I say you bent. What be that you were whispering just now to Heathcliff? It's no business of yours what I whisper. No, Miss Cathy, you shouldn't speak to Joseph like that. Oh, why shouldn't she, Ellen? Joseph owes me your brother's servant. He's got no right to give orders to Cathy. I got a right to teach you both to spend Sabbath day in proper manner. As for being a servant, what else are you, Heathcliff? I'd like to know, huh? Nay, you're not as good as a servant. A beggar's brat, a foundling, that's what you are. Leave Heathcliff alone, Joseph. I won't hear you abuse him. No, oh, you won't, won't you? No, I won't. And as for your sermon, you can preach it to yourself and Ellen if she's fool enough to listen to it. I'm not staying in this freezing cold attic any longer. Come on, Heathcliff. I say you're to stay here. It is ordered. Aye, oh, Miss Cathy. Now, Mr. Hendley said you were to stay up here. Only so he could be alone to kiss and cuddle his silly little wife. Well, I'm not going to freeze for them. Nor me. Ellen can stay up here if she likes. I'd rather be in the stables. Aye, uh, that's where you properly belong. Oh, come on, Miss Cathy. Oh, she shouldn't defy her brother so. He'll be so angry. A touch of the whip is what she needs. He ought to lay it about her shoulders like he lays it about that Heathcliff's. Now, oh, where did I get in that scripture? Ah, here it is. You pay attention now, Alan Dean. I'm listening, Joseph. Ah, you'd better. And the Lord our God made a covenant with us in Oreb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers. Having toasted scones, I can smell them. I'm hungry, aren't you? No, not very. Cathy, let's not go into the parlour. Let's go out on the moors, where we can be by ourselves. But I want some tea. I'm frozen. I'm not afraid of Hendley. Do you think I am? What? You mean you dare to think I am? Do you? Heathcliff, don't grip my arm like that. You're hurting me. I'm sorry. You're the only thing here. I, I wouldn't hurt anything I care for. But you must never say that I'm afraid. Do you understand? I didn't. My day will come. The day when I shall make an end of Hindley. The day I'll pay him back for everything. Heathcliff, you mustn't say things like that. Oh, I won't murder him. He's not good enough for me to hang for. But I'll bring about his death as surely as God. Oh, better still, the devil is my witness... You shall see it, Cathy. I'll make you see it since you don't believe me. Oh, Heathcliff, don't look so black and cross. You make yourself ugly and you're not. Let's go into the parlour. We can pretend that Joseph's service is over. Who's that? Oh, it's you. Has Joseph finished already? Yes, he can't be. <laughs> it's barely five o'clock. Well, it was too cold to stay in the attic. Can make room for us by the fire. That's better. Can we have some tea, Hindley? You may. Your companion can take his in the kitchen. Why can't Heathcliff stay here? Because I say he shall not. He always took his meals with us when father was alive. Father's not alive now, and I'm master here. You mean to make me remember that, don't you, Hindley? Yes, I do. 
My father had a liking for you. God only knows why. Because he found you, I suppose. But I am of a different sort. I have no taste for gutter snipes. Hindley! And neither has my wife. She's delicate. She's carrying my child. I don't want her shocked or upset by the sight of your oafish face for never glowering at her. One of these days, Hindley... Mr. Hindley... Mr. Hindley or Mr. Earnshaw, that's what you call me, remember that. <laughs> and what will you do one of these days? Take yourself off from Wuthering Heights, I suppose. I'll do that and more. Much more. I'll make you eat every word. I'll make you sorry for the way you treat me. Ah, threatened men live long. Well, you're going. He's good now. Stay here, don't go. Hindley, how could you? He said, wait for me. Wait for me. Catherine, don't go outside without a cloak. It's perishing. Hindley, go and fetch her back. She'll catch her death. Uh, she'll come to no harm. She's run wild for as long as I can remember. But she shouldn't behave in that coltish manner. She must be almost grown up. How old is she? Yeah, 17, I think. Yes, yeah, 17. Then she's nearly old enough to be married. Hindley, we must find someone for her. Yes, marriage would be good for her. For one thing, it would get her away from that hind she's so fond of. And for another, I want the place to ourselves. I want to be alone here with you, my darling. And I with you, Hindley. And you must help her, Francis. Make her pretty and dainty like yourself. <laughs> then someone might fancy her. <gasps> what is it? Francis, what's the matter? Oh, it's all right now. The child moved in me. Hold me close, Hindley. Always, my darling. Always. Oh, Hindley, you do love me. As my life, Francis. As my life. Heathcliff, don't run so fast. I can't catch you. Heathcliff, wait for me, please. Oh, it was cruel of you to run away from me. No, I can't bear to be apart from you. Heathcliff, you're not angry with me because of what Hindley said to you? No, not with you. Oh, but Cathy... What? Uh, nothing. What good are words? They help. Between two people who understand each other. And I understand you, Heathcliff. You and I are like one flesh with but one soul and one mind between us. Yes. That's true. It's always been so, hasn't it, since our earliest days... And you'll never desert me, Cathy. You swear you'll always belong to me. I swear it. Oh, Cathy. No one could be poorer than I am, and yet... I'm so rich in this one thing. Your love for me. Tell me what you were going to say. Let's stand by this wall where it's sheltered. Wind's too cold for you here. There. With this at our backs, we shall keep warm. Oh, look. How pretty the lights are in that house, Diver. Yeah. That's Thrust Cross Grange. I know. We used to visit with the Lintons before Father died. Hindley cares nothing for other people, so I haven't seen them for years now. They were a brother and a sister. I remember. Yes, of course you do. <laughs> you threw a tureen of apple sauce over Edgar Linton one day because he said your hair wanted I cutting. I still bear the scars of the whipping Hindley gave me for that. Poor Heathcliff. So many whippings. So many unkindnesses. If only... What? If only you knew who you were. Don't you remember anything of your parents? No. Nor even of where you once lived? Nothing. Only a dark street in Liverpool. And hunger and terror. And then your father's kind face looking down at me. His strong arms gathering me up. And then, the warmth of the fire at Wuthering Heights. Food, shelter, and a home at last. But no love after he died. Except from you. Cathy, one day I'll be worthy of you. I'll better myself, I swear I will. 
I learned to read and write. I knew a little until Hindley took my books away. I'll make money somehow. And I'll, I'll buy Wuthering Heights for you so we can live there always, you and I. No one else. Just you and I. You'll wait for me, Cathy. Give me your promise that you'll wait for me. Why do you need my promise when you know I will? I need it. Let me hear you say it. I promise I will wait for you. Your face is cold as I hold it between my hands. But your lips are warm. Uh, you're shivering. We must go back. No, not yet. Hindley and Francis don't want me at home. Let's walk, Heathcliff. I shall be warm enough if I walk. Why well, shall we walk too? Oh, anywhere. No, I know. Let's go down to the Grange. The Grange? We can peep in at the windows and see what they're doing. I can't remember what the house is like inside. I'd like to see it again. All right. But they have dogs running loose in the garden. We must be careful. Make so much noise. Where's the light from? The drawing room. Look, the curtains are undrawn. We can see in. Speak softly. Look, that's Edgar Linton playing and his sister Isabella singing. Squeaking, you mean? <laughs> that's unkind. She sings very nicely. She's pretty, too. If you like that sort of doll like prettiness. Wouldn't you admire me, Heathcliff, if I had flaxen hair and blue eyes like hers? No, I wouldn't. I like you as you are. Don't say you admire her. No. But I admire her brother. That ninny? I don't think he looks a ninny at all. He's very handsome. <laughs> Much handsomer than you are. Quiet. I'll hear you. The dogs have got wind of us. Come away. Hurry. <laughs> Kathy! <laughs> What's going on? Who's out there? Robert, there are prowlers in the garden. Call your dog off before I throttle it. It's, it's got Miss Earnshaw by the ankle. Miss Earnshaw, skulker, down. Here, boy, here. All right, sir, we've got him. You, whoever you are, bring Miss Earnshaw round to the front door. Kathy, can you stand? No. My foot. Wait, I'll come and help you. I can carry her. I don't need your help. Keep that brute off. This way, bring her into the drawing room. Isabella, tell the servants to fetch water and some bandages. In here, if you please. Set her down on that sofa. Thank you. Are you all right, Miss Earnshaw? All right. Look at her foot. See what your dog's done. It was our own fault, Heathcliff. We shouldn't have been there. Thank you, Mr. Linton. I shall be all right when I've rested a little. I brought the things myself, Edgar. Thank you, Isabella. Bathe her foot while I send a servant for Dr. Kenny. No, please, I don't need a doctor, really. I oh, hope it surely. No, please, it isn't necessary. Well, we shall see in the morning. In the morning? You must stay here for the night, at least. Stay here? But my brother will wonder... Well, your that... servant can take a message. My servant? Oh, you mean he... would better go now, I think. I'm not her servant. Oh, well, then... Uh... Nor am I Hindley Earnshaw's. And I'll thank you not to call me so. I beg your pardon. I thought from the, your apparel and the fact that you were in attendance on Miss Earnshaw... I was Earnshaw. in her company. Not in attendance on her. I see. Well, whatever your position in Mr. Earnshaw's house, you will, I'm sure, have no objection to telling him what has happened. I'm not leaving, Cathy. Heathcliff, you must. We can't both stay here. And I'm sure Mr. Linton and his sister will look after me beautifully. Well, of course we will. And I promise we will take you back to Wuthering Heights as soon as you're well enough to go. Now, is that bandage too tight? No, it, it feels just right, thank you. Does the foot hurt at all? No, it's only a little sore. Heathcliff, don't just stand there like that. Why don't you go? Kathy, you've no need to stay here. I could help you back home. Not far over the moors. Nonsense. It's out of the question. Of course it is. But if your foot's not badly hurt... Oh, Heathcliff, don't be so stubborn. What's it to you what I do? Besides, I shan't be away for long. 
Oh, go away, do. Very well, I'll go. Since you plainly want me to. Who is he, Miss Earnshaw? He, he says he's not a servant, but he looks like one, and yet he's so familiar with you. He should be taught to address you with proper respect, whoever he is. Now let me move this sofa nearer the fire. There, is that better? Thank you, yes. You must have a glass of wine. Will you get it, Isabella? Oh, yes. We must make our unexpected guest comfortable. This will make you feel better. And later, you shall take supper with us. Thank you. And tomorrow I must lend you a dress. Yours is all muddy and torn. A dress? What? Do you mean like the one you're wearing? <laughs> of course. That's so pretty. Well, why shouldn't it be? I like pretty things, don't you? I, I don't know. I never had any. You shall choose from every dress I have. I think, yes, I'm sure the green would suit you. Don't you think so, Edgar? I think Miss Earnshaw would look beautiful in it. And I shall dress your hair in curls like mine. <gasps> it's such pretty hair, and you've let it become all rough and tangled. <laughs> you won't know yourself truly when I've done with you. Indeed, you won't, Cathy. Oh, I may call you Cathy, mayn't I? Of course, Cathy. Oh, don't go back to Wuthering Heights too soon. It'll be such fun to have you here. Oh, no, but I... no, no. I won't listen to excuses. We've got to. And we mean to keep you, don't we, Edgar? That we do. You are our prisoner, Miss Earnshaw, for at least a week. Get out of here, you brute. Let me groom you, you devil. Heathcliff! Heathcliff, where are you? Here, Ellen. In the stables. Why didn't you come in for your dinner? Do you think I've nothing better to do than bring it out to you? <coughs> there you are. Now eat it. I've kept it hot. Thank you. Oh, Heathcliff. What's the matter now? The matter is you. If you were careless and unkempt before Miss Cathy was absent, you're ten times more so now. But look at you. Your hair, your clothes, you're covered in mud and grime. Well, what is she going to think of you when she returns? If she ever does return? Well, of course she will. She can't stay with the Lintons forever. She's been away five weeks. I never thought she'd ever want to stay away from Wuthering Heights. Well, it's made a nice change for her to be at the Grange. The mistress has been to visit her there and says she's thoroughly enjoying herself. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Earnshaw has every hope she'll return home a properly behaved young lady. Do you mean they're changing her? It's to be hoped they are. But they mustn't do that, Ellen. They mustn't ever change her. Stuff and nonsense. I mean it. Cathy's perfect as she is. Perfect? Well, that's your opinion. I might say it isn't mine, nor other people's. Oh, who cares about other people? Well, everybody should, if they're right thinking. Well, you may be satisfied with her. But what about her future? How is she to marry, may I ask, unless she changes her ways and stops running about the country like a young savage? Her future's settled. Is it? It's the first I've heard of it. Cathy's to marry me. She's mine. She knows she is. Yours? Well, that's a silly dream, if ever there was one. What have you got to offer her? Myself. My ambitions. Yourself? Well, that's something she wouldn't have as a gift if she saw what you look like now. And as for your ambitions, well, they haven't got you very far, have they? They will. You wait. See me, what's that? Can you see, Heathcliff? It's a carriage. A carriage? It, it's the Linton's carriage. The Linton's? Cathy's getting out of it now. She's come back. Cathy! Now, Heathcliff, wait. Now, tidy yourself before Miss Catherine sees you. Why, Edgar Linton's not with her. <laughs> she's alone. Well, never mind, it's what she's been used to now. No, let me go. Heathcliff! Oh, what's the use? There's no reason in not talking with him. Well, upon my word, Catherine, I hardly recognized you. You're quite a beauty. Thank you, Hindley. 
How are you, Francis? Catherine, welcome back. <laughs> My dear child, you look wonderful. What a pretty dress. Isabella Linton gave it to it me. It suits you beautifully, doesn't it, Henley? Indeed, it does. I've never seen her looking so well. Hindley, I've only just realised all my gowns are very old. May I order myself some new ones from Gimmerton? <laughs> to be sure you may. I'm glad to see you taking an interest in what you look like. Let me untie your bonnet or you'll disarrange your curls. <gasps> there. Well, Isabella Linton is not to be compared with her, is she, Hindley? <laughs> Isabella Linton hasn't Catherine's natural advantages. But you must take care not to run wild again. Kathy, what the devil? It's the stable boy, is it? Well, you may come forward and wish Miss Catherine welcome, as the other servants have done. Heathcliff! What's the matter? Why do you draw back? You haven't forgotten me, have you? <laughs> the fellow's overawed by her. You may shake hands with Miss Catherine Heathcliff, once in a way that is permitted. You're different. Kathy, you've changed. I'm different. Well, you're not. I'd forgotten how very black and cross you always look and how funny and grim. That's because I've grown used to Edgar and Isabella Linton. Are you laughing at me? No, Heathcliff. At least I didn't mean to. It was just that you looked so odd. If you wash your face and brush your hair, it'll be all right. And you're so dirty and... Soiled my glove. You needn't have touched me. I shall be as dirty as I please. I like to be dirty. I will be dirty. But I won't. I won't stand here and be laughed at. I won't bear it. He's give way, don't go, please. Don't run after him, Catherine. But he's hurt. I didn't mean to hurt him. Ah, it was his own fault. I truly believe he revels in the dirt and muck of a stable. Ah, oh, Ellen, uh, take Miss Cathy upstairs and see her new things are put carefully away. Yes, Mrs. Earnshaw. Welcome home, Miss Cathy. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Catherine, did you give the Lintons my invitation to spend Christmas evening with us? Oh, yes, Francis, they're coming. Good. I could see that Edgar Linton liked you very much, Catherine. Oh. And he's a very pleasant and wealthy young gentleman, you know. Now, run along with Ellen, Nadie. Very well, Francis. Edgar Linton would be a most desirable match for her, Hindley. But we must keep her away from Heathcliff. Aye, we must. And we will. there. What do you want, Ellen? Well, to bring you indoors, of course. Well, why are you skulking out here in the stables? Why not? It's where they all think I ought to be. Oh, Heathcliff, don't talk like that. Why, it's Christmas when everyone should be merry. Well, there's even the town band come out from Gimmerton to give us some music. Can't you hear it? Where's Cathy? Well, where she should be, of course, in the parlour. Talking to Edgar Linton. I dare say. No. Well, why shouldn't she? He looks and speaks a great deal pleasanter than you do. <sighs> and I suppose I must wish for Edgar Linton's looks and his clothes and his riches before she can like me again. I you might. If it weren't for the fact that Miss Cathy thinks the world of you, in spite of what you are. Oh. I she does still. If only you wouldn't show such a poor and jealous spirit. You should look at yourself in the glass sometimes. Then you'd see what she sees. Two great lines between your eyes because you frown so much. Your brows drawn down so that your eyes are like a couple of black fiends that look glinting from under them like devil spies. And the expression of a vicious cur that seems to know it deserves the kicks it gets yet hates all the world as well as the kicker for what it suffers. You paint a pretty picture of me, Ellen. I paint a true one. And am I supposed to draw a lesson from it? You could if you wished. Oh, Heathcliff, even if you're not handsome, 
A good heart can help you to a bonny face, while a bad one will turn the bonniest into something worse than ugly. Oh, you don't listen to me. Your thoughts are far away. I warrant even now you're thinking of revenge and bitter things. Yes, I am. I'm thinking I... I shall pay Hindley back. I don't care how long I wait. If only I could do it at the last. I hope he won't die, that's all, before I do. For shame, Heathcliff. It's for God to punish wicked people. We should learn to forgive. No. God won't have the satisfaction that I shall. I only wish I knew the best way to get my vengeance. Go away, Lynn. Leave me alone. Heathcliff. Leave me alone, I say. I'll plan it out. While I'm thinking of that, I don't feel pain. Helen! Helen, where are you? It's Miss Cathy. I'm here, Miss Cathy. My brother's asking for you. It's time to serve supper. <laughs> what are you doing out here? I was talking to Heathcliff, Miss. Oh. Heathcliff, remember what I told you. Show your best points, not your worst. Oh, you'd best not walk about in here, Miss Cathy. You'll spoil that pretty dress of yours with all the muck out here. Cathy, don't go. Stay and talk to me. You heard what Ellen said. I can't stay here. It's too dirty. Besides, it's cold as well. You were never cold when you were with me before. Even out on the moors. Cathy, what's changed you? Nothing's changed me. That's not true. And a lie is something new between us. I don't want to stay here. I can make you. Oh, he's going to let go of me. You're hurting my wrist. Well, why shouldn't you feel pain as you've made me feel it? What have I done? You know. Oh, don't pretend you don't know. Oh, Kathy, don't... Don't turn away from me because of those... silly, pitiful friends of yours. You're all I have here. The only thing that matters to me. And if I lost you... Oh, Heathcliff, don't talk nonsense. Why should you lose me? I can be friends with you as well as with them, can't I? But you aren't my friend anymore. Kathy... Look at this. What on earth's that dirty bit of paper? It's an almanac. I took it from the kitchen. What on earth for? What are all those marks on it? A record. Record? The crosses are for the evenings you've spent with the Lintons. And the dots are for those you've spent with me. I've marked every day. Oh, then I think it was very foolish of you. As if I took notice. Where's the sense of it? To show you I do take notice. And why should I always be sitting with you? What good do I get? What do you talk about? You might be dumb for anything you say to amuse me or anything you do either. You... You never told me before I talked too little. Or that you dislike my company. It's no company at all when people know nothing and say nothing. Cathy! I must go back! Francis wants to go to bed early. I think the baby may be coming any day now, and she feels it. I'll come indoors with you. No. No, you better not. Don't you want me to? It's not that, Heathcliff. I think it is. No. Heathcliff, indeed, it's not. Only Hindley's been drinking, and he's not in the best of humours. He'll only quarrel with you. I'll ask Ellen to leave you some supper in the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Good night, Heathcliff. Don't touch me! You leave me alone. You go to your grand friends since you prefer their company. Heathcliff, I don't mean to be unkind. Truly, I don't. But if only you would improve yourself. Catherine, our guests are leaving. Where are you? I must go. Hindley's calling me. Good night, Heathcliff. Oh, God. <laughs> a few weeks after that Christmas, Mrs. Earnshaw was brought to bed of her child. She was not strong, and the confinement was to prove a difficult one. Mr. Hindley had not many virtues, but among the few he had was a deep and overwhelming love for his young wife. Never a temperate man. His anxiety at this time drove him to drink even more excessively. 
Joseph. Joseph, where the devil are you, old fool? I'm here. And not so much the old fool either. What's all shouting for? Give me another bottle of brandy. Yeah, I brought the four one not two hours since. Have you finished that already? Or is it to you if I have? No, uh, it's not, don't you think it? If you mun drink yourself into your grave before your time, you're at liberty to do so. I'll not try and stop you. Out of my road, woman. Look where you're going, then. You nearly had this jug of hot water out of my hand. Ellen, Ellen, how is she? Now, don't you fret yourself, sir. The mistress is doing fine. Don't put me off with that kind of talk. You think I don't guess there's something wrong? She's been in labor half the night. Poor little Francis. Oh, she screamed so it broke my heart. Dr. Kenneth will take good care of her, sir. It's a difficult birth, you see. Her being so small and young. And not over strong either, the doctor says. Ellen. She's not going to die, is she? I couldn't bear it if she died. I couldn't live without Francis. Of course she's not going to die, Mr. Hindley. What nonsense. Why, this is a time to be cheerful with a young one coming. Not a time to talk of dying. And if I might say so, Mr. Hindley, I'd give myself a wash and a shave if I were you. You'll feel all the better for it after sitting up all night. Uh, What does it matter? Well, sir, the doctor may be calling you up to see the mistress any time now. And you wouldn't want her to see you not looking your best now, would you? Ellen, are you there? Come upstairs quickly. I need your help. I'm coming, doctor. I must go up to him, sir. Now, you be a good heart, Mr. Hindley. Everything will be all right. You'll see. Ellen, Ellen, bring me word how she is. Bring me word soon. Yes, sir. Ow. Joseph! Where the devil is that brandy? Hurry up with it, will you? I'll come and make you. Joseph's gone to the cellar, Hindley. I saw him. Huh? What the devil have you come indoors for? I told you to stay away from this house. What's Heathcliff doing with you? We only came in to see if we could help. Hindley, has the baby come yet? No, not yet. Then don't you think Heathcliff should ride to Gimmerton for the midwife? Helen knows what to do. Dr. Kenneth is directing her. Yes, I know. Francis wants none of your help. Get out that surly brute with you. You needn't think I volunteered to help. Kathy made me come. Then she can make you go away again. Oh, God in heaven. What are they doing to her? Helen, Dr. Kenneth, if you dare hurt her. Oh, she's in pain. Terrible pain. Oh, God, ease it for her. Dear God, ease it. Oh, Heathcliff, it's terrible, isn't it? A new life being born. I'd be so frightened if it were happening to me. I wouldn't let you be frightened, Cathy. I'd be with you, holding you, giving you my strength. The child! Hindley, do you hear? It's born, the baby's come! Francis! Francis! Ellen! I must see her. You must let me see her. No, Henley, you mustn't go into the bedroom yet. Stay where you are. I'll come after you. Ellen, how is she? How is Frances? I brought you the baby to see, Mr. Hindley. It's a boy, sir, and as sturdy a little fellow as you could wish to see. Frances, tell me how Frances is. Why, she's bonny, sir, like I said. Thank God. Thank God. God. And longing to see you, sir. Uh, Dr. Kenneth, here's Mr. Earnshaw asking to see the mistress. Let me see her, Doctor. I must see her. In one moment, Mr. Earnshaw, in a moment. I'd like a word with you first. Uh, take the child downstairs, Ellen. Keep it warmly wrapped up and place the cradle near the fire. I will, sir. Oh, the little... Don't Lord. talk loudly, Mr. Earnshaw. Oh, we don't want your wife to overhear us. Don't huh? Nothing wrong with her, is it? Tell me there's nothing wrong. I wish I could, Mr. Earnshaw. I wish with all my heart I could. But the truth is, she is ill. Gravely ill. 
It, it, it's weakness. Nothing more. It's only natural at this time. It's more than weakness. Far, far more, alas. She has been in a consumption these many months. No. No, I'll not believe it. It can't be true. She was, I fear, already afflicted with it when you brought her to these parts. When I first saw her, I felt only too convinced you wouldn't keep her long. There was no need for me to speak of it. I only prayed with all my heart I might be wrong. You are. You must be. She can't die, no. No, you must save her. Mr. Earnshaw, I can't. Bearing this child, I fear, has finished her. It's taken all the little strength she had to carry it and bring it forth. I won't believe you. Frances is so young. She's not 20 yet. I can't lose her. Quiet, please, quiet. Don't let her hear you. Try to be thankful that your wife has been spared to leave you a son. Thankful? I don't want the child. I want her. Frances! Frances! Mr. Earnshaw, please, don't excite her. Let her rest. Ah, well, it can make very little difference now. <coughs> Hindley? Is that you? Yes, Francis, it's me. How are you, my darling? Come close to me. Kiss me. Hindley, you've been drinking. I was so worried about you, my darling. You were in such pain. It's all over now. The pain's gone. I feel so well. <laughs> oh, Francis... But this stupid cough, which will go when the summer comes. Hindley, have you seen our baby? Such a beautiful child. The finest boy that ever breathed. Oh, don't speak, yeah. my love. You must be quiet. You need all your strength. Lie quietly. Hold my hand, then. That's better. Your hand's so warm and strong. Oh, Francis. And don't let that doctor come near me again. I don't like him. He looks at me with such a gloomy face. I was only ill with the baby. The baby always makes you ill, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, my darling. You'll be well and strong again soon. Hindley, I want him to be called Harriton. Will you promise me he shall be called Harriton? You shall see him christened it yourself. Mm. I mean, hush now. Don't talk anymore. Huh? Hindley. What's the matter? Francis, what is it? Hold me in your arms. Take me up. I, I want you to hold me. There. <laughs> there. There, Francis, I have you close. Everything seems misty somehow. It's going far away. As if it was withdrawing from me. Hindley, you're still there, aren't you? Yes, yes, I'm here. I can feel you, but I can't see you. Why is everything going black? Hindley, speak. I, I can't hear you anymore. Speak. Francis, I, I'm here. I'm speaking. Francis, you must hear me. 
Go away from me. Hold me. Stay close to me. Oh. Oh, Hindley. I think... I think I'm dying. Don't let me die. Don't let me... Francis. Francis, speak to me. Speak to me. She's dead. That accursed child has killed her. Francis, come back to me. I'll sacrifice his life. I'll do anything only to have you back. Get about your business. You will and do as I tell you. Give me that child. Please get right to the Lintons. Get somebody. He's mad. Please, Cliff, go and get to the stables. Just stay here. That's its best. Well, Ellen, are you going to obey me? Yes, yes, sir. You will be careful of him, Mr. Hindley. He's not an hour old. Such a beautiful child. Francis was beautiful, too. And she loved me. That breath took her from me. Give it to me! Be careful, sir! What are you talking about? Raising the child up like that! Ellen, you see those flagstones there at your feet? Are you going to throw this child down so that it can dash out its brains on them? No! It shall not live since Francis has died! No, Monsieur Kinsley, for the love of God! I'm going to three, one, two, three, down you go! Son of the man who hates me. I should have let you fall. Give him to me, Heathcliff. Mr. Hindley, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're worse than a heathen treating your own flesh and blood in such a manner. Francis. You shan't meddle with him again. Francis. Miss Cathy, get you from the house. It's not fit for Christians. Go and see the Lintons. Stay with them until your brother's himself again. Francis. Come out on the moor with me, Cathy. No. I'll do as Ellen says. I'll go to the Lintons. Cathy. And you can stay away from me, Heathcliff. You and Henley drive me from this house. You're as bad as he is. Cathy, don't go. If I've offended you... Cathy, wait. Have they gone, Ellen? And make yourself sober. Sober? I'm going to get drunker still and stay drunk. Everything I loved has gone from me. Everything? You're the child now, sir. To rear and love. Love? You'll come to love him, sir. Indeed you will. Never. And he must be named, too, Mr. Hindley. You must give him a name. Francis wanted him to be called Harriton. And a good and sure name, too. Eh, hey, little Harriton? I brought you the brandy. About time, too. Give it to me. I'd have brought it before. If you had all racketing going on, I'd no mind to have my head bashed. Oh, my little baby. Oh, Oh, so you have a child now, have you? A son, Joseph. 
A son, eh? Well, much good may he do you. Oh, Mr. Henley, don't drink any more. Think of this unfortunate child if you can. Nothing for yourself. Why should I think of him? Anyone will do better for him than I shall. You never said a truer word. Well, I'll leave you to your drinking, if that's your fancy. I've work to do. Mr. Hendley, please. Have mercy on your own soul. Not I. I shall have the greatest pleasure in sending it to perdition to punish its maker. Do you want to hear a toast, Ellen? Here, I give you one. Here's to my soul and its hearty damnation. Catherine, did you like that piece? What? Oh, very much, Edgar. You play beautifully. I don't believe you had a note. No, I didn't. I'm sorry, I was thinking. You've been melancholy today, Catherine. Won't you tell me why? Oh, it's nothing. I come from a melancholy house, that's all. I know. Why don't you leave it? How can I? It's my home. I could offer you another. This could be your home, Catherine. This? If you would marry me, I love you very dearly. I have for many months. Oh, Edgar. And I'd spare no effort to make you happy. You're very generous, Edgar. Have you thought whether I should make you happy? I would be happy in loving you. You, you touch me, Edgar, very deeply. And I'm very fond of you. Will you let me think on this? Of course. Now I must go home. Would you ask them to bring my horse round, please? I shall ride back with you. Perhaps before the end of our journey, you may give me your answer. Now, Heathcliff, try again. You can do it if you try. Why, you used to know your letters as well as anybody. It's all, all gone from me, Ellen. I've read my brain since that... that devil Hindley took my books from me and sent me to the stables. This printed page is so much gibberish to me. Well, that's no reason to throw it down and destroy a good book. I'm sorry. Well, so you should be. But even if you can't read and write, what then? Many a man has made his mark in the world. Who could do neither? And I want to reach up to Cathy. To be her equal. She despises me now, ever since she took up with the Lintons. Oh, I know she does. And I know different. Why, she thinks the world of you. Much more than you deserve, in my opinion. Then, then why does she leave me to spend so much time with that popinjay? Well, because it's pleasanter for her at that house than it is here. And what sort of a place is Wuthering Heights for a young girl to grow up in? Raised voices, harsh words from morning till night. She's going further and further away from me, Ellen. I know she is. Then bring her back to you. Speak her fairly. Make your company and your person more attracted to her. Ask her to help you with your studies. Don't be so proud. You're too poor, Heathcliff, to be so proud. Don't take my pride from me, Ellen. It's all I have. Listen. It, that, that's horses. Look out of the window, Heathcliff. See if it's Miss Cathy. Yes, it is. With a Galinton. Do you see him? It's all, always with us. She's stealing her away from me. Stop for nonsense. Now, would you have her ride back home alone? That is ridden off, you see. He's not coming in. Look, Heathcliff, take your book into the kitchen and leave the parlour door ajar. What for? I'll try and find out the state of her mind about you. And you shall hear what she says. Hmm? Oh, go on now, quickly. She's coming in. Oh, aye. Oh, Ellen, it's so cold out and chilled to the bone. Come and sit here by the fire, then. Oh, mind the cradle now. The baby's asleep. Are you all alone? 
Where's Hindley? Sleeping. Drunk, I suppose? Maybe. I don't know, I'm sure. You do know, only you won't say. Least said, so mismended, in my opinion. Ellen, I'm, I'm so unhappy. Are you? I'm sorry to hear it. Of all the people in this house, you're the one with the least of worries, I should have thought. Don't make a joke of it, I'm serious. Ellen, will you keep a secret for me? Is it worth keeping? Yes, and it worries me. I must let it out. Ellen, today Edgar Linton asked me to marry him. I see. Have you answered him? Yes, as I rode home. And what was your answer? Well, before I tell you whether it was yes or no, I want you to tell me what it ought to have been. No, really, Miss Cathy, how can I know? That's something for your own heart to decide. I should have thought. Where are you going? To shut that kitchen door. It's drafting. Oh, stay where you are. Sit down, Ellen. Don't be forever up and down. There's no draft. This is important. Don't you care what happens to me? I care a great deal. And I care about other people as well as you. Then sit still and listen. Don't keep looking towards that door. Ellen, I accepted him. You accepted him? Yes. Then what's the good of discussing the matter? You've pledged your word and you can't take it back. Say whether I should have done it. Do please, Ellen. Miss Cathy, do you love him? Of course I do. Why? What do you mean, why? Why do you love him? Well, because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Bad. And because he's young and cheerful. Bad still. And because he loves me and he'll be rich and I shall be the greatest woman in the neighborhood and I shall be proud of having such a husband. Worst of all. And how do you love him? How? As everybody loves, you're being silly. Not at all. Answer me. I love the ground under his feet, the air over his head, everything he touches and every word he says. I love his look his actions and him entirely and altogether. There now. Then why aren't you happy? Well, I am happy. Well, then I'm not. Somewhere, either in my head or my heart, wherever my soul lives, I'm convinced I'm wrong. And don't you know why? Ellen, do you ever have strange dreams? Yes, now and then. So do I. Last night I had the strangest dream of all. I dreamt I was in heaven and I was breaking my heart with weeping to come back to earth. And the angels were so angry that they flung me out into the middle of the heath on top of Wuthering Heights when I woke up sobbing for joy. Oh, Ellen, I've no more business to marry Edgar Linton than I have to be in heaven. And if Hindley hadn't brought Heathcliff so low, I shouldn't have thought of it. But it would degrade me now to marry Heathcliff. But I can't marry a servant, a stable boy, someone who has nothing. What's that? Who's out there in the kitchen? It, it's only Joseph. Now, take no heed. Go on. So Heathcliff shall never know how much I love him. And that's not because he's handsome, Ellen, but because he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. And Linton's is as different as a moonbeams from lightning or frost from fire. What be the matter with Heathcliff? Have either of you been saying up to him? I've not seen him since I came back from the Linton's. What do you mean? Well, somebody's got into him. I passed him just now, dashing out from kitchen as black as thundercloud. He made off for more as if the devil were after him. The kitchen? He came from the kitchen. Ah, uh, you can see for yourself. He's left the book. He was trying to teach himself by. Ellen, was he there all the time? Did you know it? Yes. And you let me say what I did? I tried to stop him hearing, Miss Cuthbert. Joseph, go after him. Bring him back. Yeah, I'll not stir myself. He's known the chap to come to my whistle. Then I will. No, Miss Cuthbert. It's too dark and wild for you to be out. He'll come back. Don't fret yourself. He won't. I know he won't. I feel it. <laughs> Let go of me, Ellen. I'll hurt you if you don't. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Miss Cathy, come back. Joseph, stop her. Nay, let her go. 
It's bonny behaviour, I must say, running among the fields at twelve at night after that foul face some devil of a gypsy Heathcliff. <laughs> Still, she'll come today, arm. Neither will he. It's a true word, if ever there was one, that the devil looks after his own. Heathcliff! Heathcliff, where are you? It's Cathy! Heathcliff, come back! I won't marry Edgar, I'll wait for you, I promise, only come back! Don't leave me, Heathcliff, you're half of me! I can't live without you! Heathcliff! Heathcliff! But Heathcliff did not come back. Though Miss Cathy, to give her adieu, waited and waited. Finally, Edgar Linton's insistence and gentle importunities became too much for her. And three years later, she honoured her pledge to Mr. Linton and married him. Upon Miss Cathy's insistence, I went with her to Thrushcross Grange. To my surprise, she was an infinitely better wife to Mr. Linton than I dared to expect. And the prospect of a child to be born when the snows came seemed all that was required to unite them for all time. Oh, Miss Cathy fretted against her enforced inactivity. There now. I've set the window wide open for you so you can feel the breeze. Even if you can't get about so much now, you can benefit from the fresh air. Oh, Ellen, I wish this baby would come. I feel so clumsy, so unlike myself. Well, of course you do. But it's only for a few weeks more. When you're well again, you'll do all the things you used to do. Shall I? I wonder. I used to run and leap and dance for joy in the old days. No. I miss Cathy. To run and leap and dance for joy would be most unsuitable for a married lady. As we grow older, things alter. But I haven't altered inside. I'm still the same. I never wanted to change anything. But you did, Miss Cathy. Yes, I did. When I married Edgar. Ellen, how long is it since Heathcliff went away? Heathcliff? Yes. No, Miss Cathy... Your mind isn't still running on him. My mind never leaves him. Did you think because I never spoke of him I'd forgotten him? Did you think because I lie dutifully beside Edgar that my mind and body don't cry Hush. out to Cathy? Hush! Is it one year or twenty, Ellen? Seems to me like an eternity. It's five years, Miss Cathy. Five years? And in all that time, I've never seen you look healthier and bonnier. So you give over thinking of the past... And thank your maker for your good husband and your beautiful home. It's what you wanted. Yes, it was. Oh, but Ellen, if only Heathcliff and I were together at Wuthering Heights. If you were, you'd be pining to be at Thrushcross Grange. I know you, Miss Cathy. Besides, you're well away from Wuthering Heights if all I hear about Mr. Hindley be a quarter true. Drinking at all hours, they say, and the farm going to ruin. And as for that poor child of his... It'll end up like Heathcliff, unwanted and uneducated, if something isn't done. Perhaps someone will love it as I loved Heathcliff. Poor little Harriton. Poor Heathcliff. Poor Cathy. And so she would go on. But in spite of these lapses into melancholy, she seemed happy enough. And we were peaceful on the whole at the Grange. But our peace, alas, was to come to an end very soon. <laughs> Joseph! Joseph, where the devil are you? I'm about my duties in the house, what I always have. You won't find me, sir, in the avoiding Oh, damn you, I don't want a chronicle of your virtues. All I want of you is to stop that child crying. <laughs> now, should I do that? I'm not Arriton's nurse, man. Then take him to Zilla to keep quiet. Go on, you brat. Run to Zilla before I give you something to whimper for. Yeah, that yeah. bairn's crying of hunger, in my opinion. It's had nought in its belly since early morn. Yeah. 
And the same as I am. Aye, but it doesn't add a bottle of brandy on top of its porridge. You'd be best to feed your son, Mr. Indy, instead of drinking away its inheritance. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Take yourself and your preaching away from here. What's that? Someone knocking on door. I know that, you fool. Answer it. Uh, what's your will? To see Mr. Earnshaw, is he within? Ah, uh, he is. Come in. Master, here's a body to see you. All right, I heard. Take yourself into the kitchen and find that child some porridge. That's Zinner's job. Do as I say. Uh, we'll see about that. Well, sir, what may I do for you? Have I said something amusing? Don't you know me, Hindley? Shake the drink out of your brain, man, and look at me. I've never seen you before. Never seen me before. You called me dog and hound and sworn at me often enough. I'm Heathcliff, man. Mm. Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Is it possible? It is. As you've changed... That's fine broadcloth you're wearing. There's none finer. Huh. And you're upstanding. And no longer the look of a whipped curl about you. Yes, I've changed. I'm rich now, Hindley. Rich? And I'll grow richer. And if there's any whipping to be done, I'll do it. But I want news from you, Hindley. Where's Cathy? Yeah. Well, with her husband, of course. Husband. <laughs> At the Grange. Where else should she be? She married at Gillington. When? Hmm? Two years ago. She might have waited. Yeah, why should she wait with no news where you'd gone or whether you were dead or alive? I would have waited and reached her in death if I couldn't in life. <laughs> well, never mind. A poor thing like Edgar Linton won't stand between us. But to business first. I need a lodging, Hindley. Will you give me one? Give you one? No. Or are you asking to be taken on as my servant again? One of these days, Hindley, I'll make you howl for mercy. A lodging for payment. Hmm. There's 20 guineas there and more where it came from. 20 guineas? I've told you at your wit's end for money. Well, will you take me? Yes, I'll sell you a lodging. Now, what you hope to gain by staying That's here... That's my affair. I'm going out now. Have a bed prepared for me when I come back. And you're going to the Grange, Heathcliff. What's that to you? Yeah. Well, I warn you. If you try to see my sister, her husband will set the dogs on you. <laughs> As he did once before. Twenty guineas here, did you say? Oh, Hindley. Yeah. Well, since the sight of that gold seems to fascinate you, you might care for a chance to gain some more. How? You were always fond of a game of cards. So? We might play together during my stay here. I've plenty more gold in my pockets. Twenty guineas and more where that came from. You'll not better me, Heathcliff. You'll not better me. Your move, Catherine. Catherine. What? It's your move, dear. Oh. Oh, Edgar, I'm tired. I don't want to play chess anymore. Isabella, come and take my place. Edgar doesn't like playing with me, Catherine. I play so badly. You play as well as I do. I shall sit here by the window. Don't take cold, Catherine. In your state, you know. Edgar, please. I'm perfectly warm. Very well, dear. Now study the board carefully, Isabella. <sighs> no, don't move so rashly. Watch what you're doing. Oh, I'm sorry, Edgar. That's better. Now... 
goes down and walking back from the orchard. She's been gathering the last of the apples. Her step's light and free. Oh, when will my step be light and free again? In another two months, Catherine. When the child is born, all your vigour and vitality will return to you. I suppose so. Oh, but I envy Ellen walking so lightly. Ellen. Who spoke? Who is it? Where are you? Here. And who may you be, skulking in the bushes? Be off with you at once, before I call the master. Don't you know me, Ellen? No, I don't, for all you're making so bold with my name. I don't talk to strangers. I'm no stranger to you, Ellen. Look into my face, woman. Now say you don't know me. Heathcliff? Yes. You've come back. Is it really you? Is it? Ellen, where is she? Where's Cathy? Is she at home? She was with her husband in the parlour when I walked out to the orchard. I must speak with her. Let you hear to me. Here? Heathcliff, how can I? Why not? Well, what reason can I give with Mr. Linton listening? Tell her some... Tell her some person from Gimmerton wishes to see her. Oh, well, in God, you see how I long to see her. Well, I'm thinking of her... She's in a delicate state of health. Seeing you so unexpectedly... Nobody ever died of joy. God, carry my message. I'm in hell till you do. Very well. Wait here, Heathcliff. Check and checkmate, I'm afraid, Isabella. Oh, dear. Did I do something wrong? Well, let's say it was not very clever, but no doubt you did your best. Yes, Ellen, what is it? There's a person from Gimmerton wishes to see the mistress, sir. Oh? Who? A man, Mrs. Linton. Well, what does he want? I didn't ask him, ma'am. Where is he, Ellen? He's at the door, sir. I didn't ask him in. Oh, well, bring in tea, Ellen. I'll be back again directly. Yes, Mrs. Linton. Mr. Linton, sir. Well, Ellen, what is it? Why don't you go and bring the tea as your mistress bid you? Well, I must speak to you first, sir. About this person. You don't know who he is. What do you mean? Why should I? It's Heathcliff, sir. He used to live at Wuthering Heights. You remember him? What, that gypsy, that plough boy? But I understood he'd gone away. Well, so he did, sir. But he's come back again, unfortunately. Well, I don't see why you should speak like that about him, Ellen. I think he was shockingly treated by Mr. Hindley. Well, it's not done him any harm, Miss Isabella, by the looks of him. I should say he's prospered well these last five years. Where is <gasps> Catherine? Why doesn't she come back? I can't have her standing outside talking to that lout. Catherine? Catherine, love, don't stand there. Bring the person in, if it be anyone in particular. Oh, Edgar! Edgar, it's Heathcliff! He's come back. He's really come back. And if he has, don't strangle me for it. He never struck me as such a marvellous treasure. There's no reason to be so frantic. Oh, I know you didn't like him, Edgar, but for my sake, you must be friends with him now. May I bring him in here? What, in the parlour? Where else? I should have thought the kitchen a more suitable place for him. Edgar. However, since you desire it, Ellen, bid him to step in. Very good, sir. And, Catherine, try to be glad without being absurd. It is not necessary for the whole household to witness the sight of your welcoming a runaway servant as a long-lost brother. How does he look, Catherine? I always thought him romantic looking before, but now, if he's prospered... I didn't notice. I just knew it was Heathcliff. Mr. Heathcliff, sir. Oh, Heathcliff, come in. You remember Edgar, of course, and Isabella? Yes, indeed. Good evening, Mr. Earnshaw. Miss Isabella. Oh, Catherine, how handsome he is. Sit down, Mr. Heathcliff. Mrs. Linton, recalling old times, would have me give you a cordial reception. And I, of course, am gratified when anything occurs to please her. Move away from the sofa, Isabella. Let Heathcliff sit by me. Oh, Catherine. Are you staying long in these parts, sir? I am returned for always, I hope so. Heathcliff, do you really mean that? You won't be going away again? No. I have plans to bring to maturity. Plans I've been forming for many years. And where are you staying, Mr. Heathcliff? Where but at Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights? 
Did Hindley welcome you there? No. But he welcomed my money. Heathcliff, don't let Hindley ruin you. Ruin me? He gambles all the time. He needs money to keep the heights, and he plays cards to get it. Yes, I heard that in Gimmerton. Then why are you letting him... He won't ruin me, Cathy. It's I who have a score to settle with him. Catherine, you crowd Mr. Heathcliff on that sofa. Come and sit over here by me. Don't be silly, Edgar. Don't you understand? Heathcliff and I wish to be close to each other. Oh, Heathcliff, I shall think this is a dream tomorrow. I shall not be able to believe I've seen and touched and spoken with you once more. Yet you don't deserve this welcome. To be absent five years and never to think of me. A little more than you've thought of me. I heard of your marriage from Hindley. Only this very day. I think, Mr. Heathcliff, we need not discuss that. I've no intention of doing so, sir. I was merely about to tell your wife how the news of it affected me. Tell me, Heathcliff. As I stood outside your house, I was meditating this plan. I was to have one glimpse of your face. If you'd stared in surprise or pretended pleasure, I'd have gone back to Wuthering Heights to kill Hindley and then myself. Kill yourself for love? For lack of it, Miss Linton. Heathcliff, you couldn't have meant to do it. Couldn't I? You've forgotten what you meant to me. No. I've not forgotten. Well, you're welcome to put these ideas out of my mind. All I'd fought for was suddenly worthwhile. For I've fought through a bitter life since I last heard your voice. And I struggled only for you. But now you're back again. We shall see each other often. Catherine! Yes, Edgar, we shall. Heathcliff, you must walk with me on the moors again. Catherine, I protest it's not seemly. Neither are you well enough. Don't cage me, Edgar. I've been caged long enough. If you wish to observe the proprieties, Isabella can come with us. Oh, yes, Edgar. I can go with them. I hesitate to curb you, Catherine, in your present state. An occasional walk, then. And I rely upon you, Mr. Heathcliff, to see she does not overtax her strength. I make all the allowance that I can for the attachment of childhood friends. Good night, Mr. Heathcliff. He's angry with me, but I don't care. We'll walk tomorrow, Heathcliff, and the next day and the next. Over the moors again, you and I, to Wuthering Heights. Where is Heathcliff? He said we'd meet here. There he is. Can you see him? Well, he's just coming over the ridge. Yes. Heathcliff! Catherine. Yes? Well, what? What do you want to say to me? Catherine... When Heathcliff comes, please don't send me away. Send you away? Yes, you always do when you and Heathcliff start to talk together. Well, I do it for your own sake. I thought that nothing we could have to say would interest you. Yes, but it does. Well, I mean, I don't mind the conversation. I only want to be with... Well? With him. With Heathcliff? Yes. And I won't always be sent off. Oh, you're a dog in the manger, Catherine, and desire no one to be loved but yourself. Do you mean that you enjoy the society of Heathcliff? I must have misunderstood you. Oh, no, you haven't. I love him. What? More than ever you loved Edgar, and he might love me if you'd let him. All right. Let him hear of your infatuation and see what he says. No, no, you shan't run away. I'll hold you. Oh, Heathcliff. Heathcliff, hurry. I, I've got something to tell you. Let me go. Catherine, let me go. And you've heard what he says for himself. <laughs> Here he is now. Wait and What's see. What's the Cathy? Why are you holding Miss Linton like that? What's up between you two? We were quarrelling like cats about you, Heathcliff. Oh, Catherine, be quiet. And I was fairly beaten in protestations of love and admiration. Oh, Catherine, stop, please. No, no, he shall hear it all. <sighs> I was also told that if I would only have the manners to stand aside, my rival would shoot a shaft into your soul that would fix you forever and send my image into eternal oblivion. Catherine, that's not true. I never said such things. Didn't you no, don't struggle. Ah. You shall hear it all. Isabella swears that the love Edgar has for me is nothing to the love she has for you. 
and that she's fasted ever since the day before yesterday in sorrow and anger because I sent her out of your society. I'll scratch you if you don't let me go! There, I said I would! And don't you dare to follow me! Oh, there's a tigress. I think she'd have torn my eyes out if I'd held her longer. Still, we're free of her company for once, thank goodness. Why did you tease her like that, Cathy? You won't speak of the truth, will you? Oh, I assure you I was. She's been dying for your sake for several weeks and raving about you night and morning. Has she? Has she indeed? But don't talk of her anymore. I want to talk of you. Heathcliff, you are listening to me, aren't you? Yes. Yes, of course. Then don't look after Isabella. Heathcliff, why did you go away like that with never a word to me? I had to go, Cathy. There was no future for us until I became your equal. My equal? When were you never my equal? Five years ago. Heathcliff, that's nonsense. Who could have made you believe such a thing? You, yourself. I? You said so. Never. You, yourself. You'd been to the Lintons one evening. And you came into the parlor and talked to Ellen. I was in the kitchen. I was trying to teach myself to read. You said that Edgar Linton had asked you to marry him. And you'd accepted him. I remember. Then I heard you say... I think the words are stamped on my brain... It would degrade me now to marry Heathcliff. Oh, no! I left the house that moment. I tried to find you, Heathcliff. I called and called I for know. you. But I had to go. I had no possessions, only the clothes I wore. I had no plans. All I felt was a consuming passion to be worthy of you. To that end, I've struggled these five years. Oh, Heathcliff. And then I returned, and I found you married. Why didn't you wait for me, Cathy? Why did you marry Linton when you knew I must come back? But I didn't know it. I waited and waited. There was never a sign from you. The house was horrible without you. Hindley was drinking himself to death. Edgar was a refuge from it all. And he was kind. Kind? Kind? Does one marry a man because he's kind? Yes, Heathcliff. If the one thing she's lived for is gone. Then you do still love me. Love you? I think I've been dead and I'm alive again. For every thought I've spent on Edgar, I've spent a thousand on you. When you came back, Heathcliff, it was as if you'd stretched out a hand and lifted me from a living grave. Cathy? How long before you're well and strong again? Two months, perhaps. Two or three. Why do you ask? I'll make our preparations. I've money now. I'll find a place to hide us. It shall... It shall be like Wuthering Heights, because you love it so. And there you shall tame me. Bind me as you will, my darling, for my will is as nothing when you look on me with love. Oh, Cathy. Cathy, we shall laugh and leap and run together. Only this time for always. Oh, Heathcliff. I've forgotten all my struggles, all my pain. Hearing you say you love me has blotted out my hurt and suffering. Don't, don't turn your head away, my darling. Let me see your joy. Heathcliff, you do believe I love you? As some believe in their immortal souls. Even though I may shake your faith in me? That isn't possible. Heathcliff, I can't come with you. And don't be afraid, my darling. Th this is not a dream of yesterday. I'm Heathcliff, and I've come for you. I can't come with you. Cathy, I've been too sudden. You're not well, you're tired. But when the child has come, then we shall make our escape. No! Cathy, you don't mean that. Say, you don't mean it. I do mean it. It's too late. The time has passed. Passed? I've waited all these years. Don't look like that. I didn't know you'd come. Kathy, you must come with me. 
Don't torture me. I've ties that bind me here. What ties? Aren't they apparent to you? You mean your husband, then you're lying. He means nothing to you. It's true, I'm not in love with Edgar. But I love him, Heathcliff, and he's kind. Kind, kind, kind. Are we to break our hearts for one another just because he's kind? I must go, Kathy. No, Kathy, listen. Kathy, when we love, we love in spite of what we are, not for our virtues. I can't offer you his kindness. It's not in my nature. I can only say, come with me. What I offer you is life. Live with me, Kathy. Listen. Where They're calling me. I must go back. Come with me now to Wuthering Heights. It's so easy. You only have to walk there. Let me help you down the track. Oh, Heathcliff, no. Let go of me. Just one step and then another. Don't stop, Kathy. Just go on. Heathcliff. When we're there, I'll bolt the doors and I'll hold you against all comers. Just as I hold the deeds from Hindley. You hold the deeds of Wuthering Heights? Aye. He lost them to me at gambling. Keep walking, Kathy. We shall soon be at the gate. Heathcliff, don't tempt me. I can't leave Edgar with the child. Why not? You needn't fear he won't be kind to it. Oh, I can't, I can't. Kathy. If you refuse me now, you do us both a mortal injury. I've nothing, Kathy. Nothing in the world but you. Oh, Heathcliff. You think only of your own sufferings. Don't you think I've suffered too? You suffer. You suffer. You deserve to suffer. You betrayed your own heart, Cathy. When neither misery nor death nor degradation could have parted us, you, of your own will, did it. If you deny me now, don't think that I'll forgive you. Don't delude yourself with that. Or that I'll suffer unrevenged. You loved me once. Have pity. I love you still. I know I always shall, but I've no pity for you. Come. Don't drag me so. You hurt me. Hurt you? What's your hurt to mine? We're at the gate. Will you come in? No. No, I can't. And go. Go back to Linton. Go back to his kindness. May it blight and damn me. Oh. Yes, you may cry. And try to give me kisses. Judas kisses. You've broken your own heart. And in breaking it, you've broken mine. He is your husband. Get your back with him. I have nothing more to say to you. Catherine, what are you doing at this place? What is it? Why are you crying? What has this blackguard been saying to you? Don't touch me, Edgar. Move. Ah. Catherine, what is it? Pay. Pay. Heathcliff, hold me. Hold me. Oh, oh sir, you found her. Ellen, help your mistress. Is it the baby? <gasps> Miss Cathy. Oh. My lord, what have they done to you? I think Edgar and Heathcliff, they have killed me between Oh, she fainted. Get her inside, for God's sake, Mr. Heathcliff. Give her to me. I'll carry her. Follow if you wish. Someone must go for Dr. Kenneth, sir. You mean, you think the child? Yes, sir, I do. But here, in this horrible house... Ellen's right, Edgar. We daren't try to take her home. Earnshaw must have a servant who could go. I'll find someone. Do all you can for her. Yes, sir. You come with me, Miss Isabella. We shall need some help. much longer. God in heaven, how much longer? Why do you trouble yourself about her? What? Well, I think Catherine has treated you abominably. If I loved someone, I would wait for them, however long they were away. Cathy is answerable to no one but herself, Miss Isabella. She's her own mistress. What will you do now, Heathcliff? Do? You came back to marry her, but you can't marry her now, can you? Listen, was that a sound? Was it, was it suddenly so quiet in there? I think she's cruel, Heathcliff. Selfish and cruel. She wants you both. 
You and Edgar. She loves hurting you. Why should you care if I'm hurt? You're a Linton. That doesn't mean I hate you, Heathcliff. I don't. I've always liked you. (laughs) Why do you laugh? (laughs) You, you, You keep away from me. Do you hear? You keep away. Unless you want to be hurt. I don't believe you're cruel. Kathy's always said so, but I don't believe it. She knows me better than you do. You'd best listen to her. Oh, Heathcliff, why don't you show her you can be indifferent to her? That would hurt her. Don't let her see the power she has over you. Look, you're trembling because she's suffering. And it's my brother's child she's having. You... Get out! Get out! A servant has gone for the doctor. Isabella, what's the matter? Nothing. Leave me alone! Where is Catherine? In the room beyond. But wait a minute, Linton, before you go in. I have something to return to you. Return to me? Yes. Here it is, take it. A wedding ring? Yes. The one you gave Cathy. I've taken it from her finger and replaced it with a ring of my own. You entirely without decency are screwed. Cathy is mine. She has always been mine. Indeed. You seem to overlook the fact that she married me without any compulsion. She was lonely and unhappy, so she turned to you. That's the sum of her affection for you. Mr. Heathcliff... It is plainly your intention to quarrel with me if you can. But let me tell you here and now, I feel no anger towards you, only contempt and pity. You pity me? Profoundly. I must always pity someone who desires the unattainable. You think I shall find Catherine unattainable? I do. When I came upon you two just now, she was crying. Was that a sign of love, a sign of joy? I think not. As for this ring, I shall replace it on her finger and yours shall be returned to you. Now, if you will excuse me. The child! Ellen! It's a a daughter, sir. A daughter? My daughter? And Catherine? How is she? (laughs) Ellen, can you meet... God, it can't be. It it was very quick and easy, sir. She didn't suffer. She just smiled and closed her eyes. I thought at first she was asleep. Catherine! Catherine! May she wake in torment. May she burn in everlasting hell. She's killed my soul and left me living. She's found rest and left me none. I pray one prayer, one prayer with all my strength till my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw, May you never rest while I am living. You said I killed you. Haunt me then. Haunt me. Be with me always. Drive me mad. Only don't leave me here in this abyss where I can't find you. Stay with me, Kathy. Stay with me. I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul. Catherine. Catherine. Catherine! And so my little mistress died. But Heathcliff lived on to take his revenge. What that revenge was, and how it affected his own and others' lives, 
I must tell it another time. I saw it all. I knew all concerned. And as I saw it happen, so I will tell it. In Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, dramatized for broadcasting by Constance Cox, the cast was as follows. Heathcliff, Paul Daneman, Isabella Linton, Gudrun Yore, Catherine Earnshaw, Patricia Gallimore, Hindley Earnshaw, Nigel Graham, Ellen Dean, Hilda Schroeder, Edgar Linton, Douglas Hankin, Francis Earnshaw, Joe Manning Wilson, Joseph, Walter Fitzgerald, Dr. Kenneth, Dennis Hawthorne. The harpsichord was played by Alan Paul. The play was produced by Norman Wright. Saturday Night Theatre. We present Heathcliff by Emily Bronte, dramatized by Constance Cox from the novel Wuthering Heights and based upon a scenario by Rodney Ackland with Paul Daneman, Gudrun Yore and Meg Wynne Owen. Heathcliff. Once again, I, Ellen Dean, take up the story of Wuthering Heights. But this time I shall call it Heathcliff, for it is mainly concerned with him and what he did to those of us remaining about the heights. Our story begins one bitter winter day in the year 1804, when a hired carriage from Gimmerton drove up to the door of Wuthering Heights. Knock again, Linton. I have knocked. I keep on knocking. There's no one here. Well, there must be. Try again. Oh, no, wait a moment. There's someone coming from that stable yard. Call to him. Hi, you fellow. Come over here. What do you want? I wish to see Mr. Heathcliff. He weren't in the house. He went out on moor this morning. Then we must wait till he returns. Kindly open the door for us. No, I don't know about you coming inside. Don't be absurd. He summoned us from London. Please, let us in. Thank you. Now, if you'll take us somewhere where there is a fire... You'd best come into the parlour. Are you very cold? I think I caught a chill on that beastly journey. I can't stop shivering. Here'll be parlour. You can wait in here. Come to the fire, Linton. Don't take off your cloak until you're thoroughly warm. I wish we'd never come here. I think this is a horrible part of the country. Well, don't stand there staring at me, you lout. Bring in the luggage if you've nothing better to do. Hey, I was wondering what'd be the matter with you. My son is far from strong, and the journey from London has tired him. He ought to get out on moors for a bit. He looks as if he hadn't the guts of a rabbit. Kindly keep your observations to yourself, fellow. We didn't come all this way to listen to impertinent remarks from servants. Who are you calling a servant? That's what you'll be thinking I am. You're wrong. What's that? There's someone upstairs. Is it Mr. Heathcliff? Nay, no, that Ben Master. It is my father. Your father? He's bad today. But there's no to be feared of. He's not likely to come down. He keeps mainly to his room nowadays. Is he ill? <laughs> It is one way of putting it. He'll be all right. He's quietened down. Look, ma'am, I've no orders to get you out, but maybe I can find some food in the kitchen. Thank you. I want nothing. Then I'll be about my business. Uh, wait a moment. Well? I was wondering, you said your father lived here. Aye. I, too, lived in these parts many years ago. It's possible I may have known him. Would you tell me who you are? Oh, well, what's it to us who he is? Can't you see he's nothing but a servant? I'll tell you once again, I'd be no servant. Then why are you dressed like one? Why are you doing work that servants do? Now, see here, you puling, whining, way-faced creature. Don't call me names, you lout. Linton, be quiet. But you heard what he it's said. It's your fault. You should know better than to say such things. Please forgive my son. He hasn't been in Yorkshire before. He doesn't understand your ways. It was a natural mistake. Then tell him to keep a civil tongue in his head. He won't offend you again. He'd better not. Now, won't you tell me, please, who you are? You'll be made curious. 
I told you, I lived in these parts many years ago. I was Isabella Linton then. You may have heard of me. There'll be a Mr. Edgar Linton at Thrushcross Grange, about four miles from here. Thrushcross Grange was my home, and Mr. Linton is my brother. Then you know him. How is he? Is he uh, well in health? <laughs> if he be your brother, you should know more of him than I do. He has never seen or written to me since I married Mr. Heathcliff. You married Heathcliff? Eighteen years ago. Didn't you know he had a wife? Yeah, he's never spoke of one. That's natural, I suppose. I left him a month after our marriage. Now, won't you tell me your name? I have a feeling I may know you. Harriton Earnshaw. Harriton. Then you're Henry's son. Oh, but I... I knew you, Harriton, when you were a child. Oh, I've seen you so often when my brother and I were visiting here. My brother was courting Catherine. And your father would be so pleasant. And his gay little wife would make us laugh and laugh. Oh, poor Francis. Poor Catherine. Who was Catherine? Don't you know? Haven't they told you about her? No. She was your father's sister. She lived here before she married my brother Edgar. She was the only being Heathcliff ever loved. There was a carving on the mantelpiece. She showed it to me once. Yes, here it is. Catherine Earnshaw. Haven't you ever looked at it, Harriton, and wondered about it? Nay, no, are no doubt about no carving. But here it is, so plainly. Do come and read it, Harriton. It is all foolery. I don't believe he can read. That's why he doesn't want to look at it. You old Jerush. There, I knew I was right. He can't. Look at his face. Fancy a great fellow of his age not being able to read. But Linton, don't. What, That's what? cruel of you. Harriton, is it true? Can't you read? What if I can't? What used to be all this book learning? Oh, Harriton, who has done this to you? Done what to me? I'd be content with what I am. But don't you realise the stock you come from? The Earnshaws was the first family in the county. They've been here for generations. Who has denied you education? No one's denied me out. I do as I please. Harriton, was it Heathcliff? I must get back to the stables. I've got work to Harriton, do. Harriton, you called him the master. Why did you do that? Because he'd be the master. Of Wuthering Heights? Aye. But your father's alive. Wuthering Heights should be his. What's happened all these years? Why are you like this? I'll tell you nothing. Harriton. Don't have it from me. I never asked to know you. What's it to you what I be here and what I look like? And as to my father being a gentleman born, I'll tell you this. If it weren't for Heathcliff, I'd not have a roof over my head nor a bite in the stomach. So don't you come to me insulting him. But don't you talk to my mother like that, you impertinent lout. And as for thee, young whippersnapper, if you be staying here, keep out of my road or I'll break thee across my knees or would yon sticks of firewood. Then if you'll tell me nothing, I shall go to Hindley. You said he was upstairs. Linton, wait here for me. Stay where you are. Heathcliff. Well, well, well. One cat and two puppy dogs all ready to fly at one another's throats. A pleasant domestic scene for a man to come home to. I were only telling her that Get you... back to your work, Harriton. But she spoke of you. Get back to your work. I can guess how she spoke of me. I'm well able to take care of myself, as my dear wife knows. Go to Longmeadow. I've reason to believe some sheep have stumbled in a snowdrift. I'll be along to help you presently. I hate that. Well, Isabella, have you no word of greeting for me? You were not so quiet during our short period of matrimony, I seem to remember. Otherwise, we might have continued together. Never. Let me look at you. Come here by the light. Push back your hood. Oh, no. And I'm stood for you. <laughs> the years have dealt unkindly with you, Isabella. You were fairly personable once, but now... Why did you send for me? What do you want with us? You know. In time. Is it my son? I demand to know now. I asked you a question, Isabella. Is this my son? Yes. Come here. Let me see you plainly. Must I, Mama? I said come here. Yes, sir. 
Oh, God, he's even worse than I expected, and the devil knows I wasn't sanguine. What do you call him? What's your name, boy? Linton. Linton? Huh. So, Isabella, you wanted me to hate him, too, did you? Well, it won't be difficult. He's all a Linton, every bit of him. Where's my share in you, you puling chicken? Mama! Don't call on her, she can't help you. Come here and sit by me, Don't Linton. Don't go to him. Come and stand here by me. Well, Linton? Well, I think, Mama... <laughs> ah, you see, Isabella, he's come to me. I fancy Linton knows already which of us it's safest to obey. Sit down. That's right. Now we must get to know each other. We've a lot of leeway to make up. What has your mother told you about me? I told him nothing. Nothing? Only that you died before I was born. Did I? That's interesting. I have a notion you'll find me a very substantial shade. And when did she admit to you that I was alive? When you summoned us here. I had to tell him that. And did she tell you why she pretended I was dead? No, sir. What was your reason, Isabella? Hatred? Or delicacy? Neither. No? When I thought, I hoped, that you and I would never meet again, I saw no reason to embitter him against you. It's natural for a boy to wish to love his father. Kind of you, Isabella. But now that he has seen you, I will tell him. So that he'll never learn to trust you. Linton... One moment, I... Isabella. Is this to be a long narration? I have sheep that need attention. My son is more important than your property. Is he? <laughs> to whom? You can jeer at me. But it won't stop me warning him. Linton, I told you he was dead. Because I was ashamed of ever having loved him. Ashamed that I debased myself by marrying him. The years have given you wrinkles, Isabella, but they've not yet taught you caution. I've no need of caution. There is nothing more that you can do to me. No. Linton, I had been mad enough to let him see that I loved him. And that he traded made me think he had an equal passion for me. I ran away with him, and we were married. Then he told me he had married me only to revenge himself upon my brother whom he hated. But he felt nothing but abhorrence for me. <laughs> this was the day we married. We could hardly wait to tell me. Mama. Even then I tried to make him love me. But he had loved for none but one. And I was not that person. In the end I fled him. He'd lost me all my friends. My brother refused to see me. But I was free of him. Or so I thought till now. Linton... No matter what he says, don't heed him. He will never love you. Hate him, Linton. Hate him and mistrust him. Then perhaps you may be safe from him. For those are his own weapons, but never, never love him. Have you quite finished, Isabella? Yes. I have done all I can. Now, what have you to say to that, Linton? I? Well, speak up. Well, I think, sir, it would be better if Mama and I went home. Home? But this is your home, boy. Don't you like it? I meant our real home, sir, in London. You put that out of your mind. You won't be going back there. Not going back? You mean you want to keep us here? You're my wife. This is my son. Your place is here with me. But you know love for either of us. Why do you want us after all these years? I need you. For a purpose. Purpose? Don't ask me what it is. I've no intention of telling you. Listen. Nor do we... I advise you to attempt to leave. You remember my solicitor's letter? Only too well. But for your threat of taking Linton from me, I should never have come here. Then obey my wishes and you'll have no reason to regret it. I trust you released when you depart from your own nature. Your opinion matters very little to me, Isabella. I've done without it for 18 years. Now, we must see to your comfort. Ah, boy, have your traps? What? Luggage, bags. Oh, yes, they're in the yard, I think. Fetch them. Fetch them? Oh, don't you want them? 
Well, yes, but isn't there a servant? Well, what do you want with a servant? You've arms and legs, haven't you? Yes, but I've never carried bags. So before. much the better. You look in need of exercise. Come on, run. Come on, <laughs> run, boy, run. <laughs> Please, sir, I, I can't hurry. <laughs> well, we'll see about that, won't we, eh? Don't leave him alone. <laughs> Go on, out into the nice east wind with you. That'll blow your London cobwebs away. Sir, so it's freezing. Well, then you'll have to hurry, won't you, or you'll catch your death. Out with you. Go on. And don't fall into the snowdrifts on the side of the path. And don't look like that after your one new lamb, Isabella. For you'll not go after him. He'll have to fend for himself. He can't. God help him, he can't. What's the matter with him? He must have rest and care. His lungs are weak. Is he dying? Oh, heaven forbid. But the fear is always with you. Yes. Oh, Heathcliff, treat him gently. He has never known unkindness. You have no love for me, I know, but he is not offended. You be kind to Linton. Ask nothing of him. There's no compassion and no scruples. Ask that devil nothing. Who is he? Don't you know him? What are you doing down here? I never sent for you. Go back to your room. You hear him? You hear him order me? I never sent for you. He said, get back to your room. He's forgotten the time when I could order him back to the stables and he dare not disobey me. You're mistaken, Hindley. Hindley? I shall never forget it. Meet my dear wife, Isabella Hindley. Returned at last to her adoring husband. Isabella? Edgar Linton's sister, surely you remember her. She and her brother used to visit here in the days you were so fond of whining about when you were master. I shall be master still, but for your treachery. You use fantastic words, Hindley. What treachery did I ever show you? You stole this house from stole. me. Stole? You gambled and lost it to me. You cheated me. You say that again and I'll turn you out. I played you fair. Fair? Was it fair to play me when I was drunk, when I scarcely knew one card from another? Isabella has ruined me and degraded my boy. <laughs> Treated him worse than any groom or servant. My lad, Harriton, who should be among the first in the county, cannot even write his name or count upon his fingers. And all because that sneering devil hates the name of Earnshaw. As you did to me, Hindley, so I have done to you and Harriton. Yet I've been kinder to your son than ever you were to me. Kinder? You? When were you ever kind? Adderton has never known a better life than he has now. I had. That's why I suffered so. Now get back to your room. Go on. I've tolerated you long enough. And stay away from me or the sight of you may yet prompt me to do you a mischief. Let me help you. Hindley. You leave him alone. He's climbed those stairs often enough. And he's brandy and plenty in his room to console him. Uh-huh. <laughs> He is my charming son. So you carried the bags in after all. You see what a little encouragement will do? Yes, sir. What's the matter with you? It seems I've only to speak and you tremble. Hey, Hindley, stop. What more do you want of me? You see here what Isabella has presented me with. This is my son. And you, you have a son like Hamilton. All right, get into your room, and don't let me see you again today. You like it all. Now, my beautiful son, take those bags up to your quarters. Yes, sir. Where are they, sir? Up the stairs in the room next to him, Liz. You saw where he went. Yes, sir. And stay there till you're sent for. Don't show yourself again without my leave. No, sir. So, my mother... She'll be near you. Go on, up with you. Yes, sir. Take off your cloak and bonnet, Isabella. You seem to forget you're staying. I've work to do in the fields, but you'll find food if you want it in the kitchen. And get Linton whatever you think he needs. I've no wish to starve him and send him from the world before his time. Where am I sleeping, Heathcliff? In the room next to your precious son. In the room next to your precious son. Oh, oh don't think I wanted you to share my bed. 
You sickened me enough in the month we were married. Someone must help me. There must be someone. Henry. There may be something he can do. I must go and talk to Henry. Who is it? Me, Isabella. Let me in, Henry. I must speak to you. Is that devil gone? Out to the fields. Come in and speak softly. One never knows when he's about. Will you take a glass of brandy? No, no. I shall. Take it all the time. It dulls your brain, and then you forget. Yeah, forget. Oh, Henley, I need help so desperately. You must help me. Yeah. Help you? How can I help you when I can't even help myself? But you may know his mind, Hindley. Has he ever told you why he wished me to come back to him? Yeah. Him, he says nothing. Least of all to me. And you don't know what he wants with me. I didn't say that. I know well enough. He needs you, Isabella, for a plan he has. A plan? What plan? He wants your property. I have no property. No, not yet, but you soon will have. Didn't you know your brother's health was failing? My brother? No. No, I never knew. He wouldn't answer my letters. But he has a daughter. Hey, forgotten the entail. When your brother dies, the Grange will pass to you and your issue. Of course. I'd forgotten. Heathcliff hasn't. It's the ambition of his life to control our two houses. Already he has mine. Now he seeks to have yours. But if I died, the Grange would come to Linton. Yeah, do you think your son would be a barrier between that man and his ambition? You can't mean that he'd... Oh, no, I wouldn't believe that. Even Heathcliff wouldn't stoop to murder. Murder would not be necessary. Your son could never stand against him. Heathcliff could make him sign away anything. And the money. Has he designs on that as well? What money? My brother Edgar's fortune. That doesn't come to me. It will go to his daughter, Catherine. Can Heathcliff have forgotten that? Yeah, he may not know of it. He may have thought the whole estate entailed. I don't know. And that at least will never be his. Nor shall the Grange, if I can help it. I'm going to Edgar. He shall know what Heathcliff has been planning. You'll be a fool. You'll never reach the graves that drifts to six foot deep in places. Well, I'll get there somehow. I know the way. You'll risk your life for nothing. Then I must take that risk. Let me go, Henry, before Heathcliff comes back. Wait. There is another way. Another? You and I each have a score to settle with that man. We might settle it now without stirring from his house. Can we? Follow me downstairs and I'll show you. Tread softly now. You shall protect your son and Harriton. Yes, Harriton too shall have his rights. What's in your mind? See there? Over the mantelpiece. That gun. Henry. I saw Heathcliff loaded this morning. I've had to lift it down. Oh, pull back the hammers. Oh, really, no, that's murder. Hold your tongue, that's all you need to do. He's coming up the path to the door. Stand well behind me. Hinley, no. Heathcliff, take care. Hinley has a gun. Now, you fool. Get away from me. Let me kill him. <coughs> so, it's come to murder now. This is how you repay my clemency. I ought to rid myself of you here and now. Oh, Heathcliff, stop. Don't kill him. He sought to kill me. I've a mind to dash your brains out at this moment. Heathcliff, for God's sake. Yes, Heathcliff, Heathcliff, Heathcliff. You'd pray to him now, wouldn't you? You'd call him fair names to save yourself. You'd beg for mercy. Well, I'll beg for it, Hindley. Mm. Beg for mercy, as I always swore I'd make you. And hear me refuse it. Pray, Hindley, pray. 
This is your end. What's that? Look out of the window, woman, can't you? It's the girl with Patterson. They're coming up the tower. Get up, Hindley. Get up, I say. You're not hurt. Isabella, help him to the settle while I go out and find out what's to do. Hindley. Hindley. I'm going to the Grange. My brother must help us. Give me my cloak. How can you? You have to pass Heathcliff to get to the door, and he'd never let you out. This window is low. I can climb through it. Henley, if my son should ask for me, tell him where I've gone. Now shut the window after me. Bear to the east, and you may find a path. If you'll come in here, miss, I'll see what can be done for you. And who may you be, young lady? Catherine Linton. I live at Thrushcross Grange. Well, 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 well. <laughs> this is a day of surprises. This is indeed an honor. We've not had the pleasure of seeing you here before. And how may we serve you? My pony has fallen and hurt itself. I wondered if I might stable it here and let it rest a while before starting back home. By all means... Anerton shall see to your pony, and if necessary, we'll mount you afresh to get you home. Oh, no. It's very kind of you, but I couldn't let you do that. Why not? If you did, my father would know I'd been here. So? And he's forbidden me to ride near Wuthering Heights. I see. I see. Miss Linton, sit by the fire and get warm. Anerton, take that harness from the settle. Oh, I'm sorry. Sit you down, Miss Linton. Thank you. Tell me, Miss Linton, what made you disobey your father? I wanted to see the house where my mother lived as a girl. And also... Also? To see you. Me? Yes. You are Mr. Heathcliff, aren't you? I am. And you knew my mother, didn't you? Yes. I knew her. Is this room exactly as it was when she lived here? Or have there been changes made? There have been no changes. It is exactly as it was. Helen told me there was a carving on the mantelpiece. Oh. Yes, here it is. Catherine Erdogan. Come away from there. Don't touch that. What? Come away, for God's sake. What have I done? Why did he speak to me like that? Mr. Heathcliff. Have I offended you? Uh, no, 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 Miss Linton. You must forgive me. We seldom receive company and are therefore unprepared for it. Our manners are rough, but our hearts are warm. You must learn to know us. First, the young gentleman beside you... Your cousin, Harriton. My cousin? Didn't you know he had a cousin living here? But he took my horse. I thought he was a... A servant? Well, why did he behave like one if he isn't? And if he is my cousin, why has Papa told me nothing about him? Because that man has taken all he has. Hindley, what are you doing skulking down here? Get to your room, man. You've said enough for one day. Who is he? No one you need regard. Hindley, what are you doing at that cupboard? Finding something to give me oblivion. Something you've no desire to take from me. A bottle. You fool, haven't you been warned that unless you keep up the brandy, you won't last out the year? Perhaps I have no wish to. Excuse me, Miss Linton. It may seem strange to you, but I prefer my own company to the company I have here. Why does he say that? He has lost everything he had. I let him live here, but he feels his dependence. I don't know, I think our guests would like some refreshment. See what you can find for him. We've now that's good enough. Anything will do. He'll find you something. Make haste, Harriton. As you will. How strangely he behaves. I think he's half afraid of me. He's never seen anyone like you before, that's why. You are telling me the truth. He is my cousin. He is the son 
Of your mother's brother? But my mother couldn't have been at all like him. No, she wasn't. Oh, well, sometimes there's a look of her about him. Well, I must say I hope my other cousin is more presentable. Your other cousin? My cousin Linton, who lives in London with my Aunt Isabella. Papa uh, says when he's better, we shall go and visit them. <laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> I was only thinking how fortunate it was that you need not go so far. My son, your cousin Linton, is here. Here? He arrived from London with his mother today. But Papa never told me they were coming. I don't imagine he knew. I don't consult your father in my dealings with my family. Should you like to see your cousin? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Then you shall. Linton! Linton! Yes, sir? Come down, we have a visitor. And make yourself presentable. I'm delighted to be able to oblige you with a sight of him, Miss Linton. Mr. Heathcliff? Yes. My cousin Linton. Well, he isn't like Harriton, is he? No. <laughs> He's not a bit like Harriton. He rather resembles... Your father, as I remember him at his age. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> you see, Linton will inherit my father's house. And I couldn't bear it if the Grange were to pass to someone who wasn't fit to live in it, like Harriton. Tell me, Miss Linton, won't it grieve you to see the Grange pass away from you? Oh, but it won't happen for years yet. Papa's not very old. And even when it does, I shall have plenty of money. I shall build myself another house like it. Well, I understood that the estate was entailed. Oh, it is. But not Papa's fortune. I shall inherit that. I see. That's something I was not aware of. Ah, here you are at last. I have a surprise for you. I don't like surprises. They generally turn out to be unpleasant. When we left London, Mama said she had a surprise for me. And she brought me here. Where is she, sir? Oh. My mother. I left her down here. Has she gone away? Have you sent her away without telling Don't me? Don't be a fool, boy. How could she go away? What means has she got to travel? Stop fretting yourself. Come and meet your cousin, Catherine. My cousin, Catherine? Yes, from the Grange. To be, I hope, our frequent visitor. Linton. Oh, I'm so glad to meet you. Yes, it's true. You're not a bit like Harriton. Like Harriton? I should hope not, indeed. Now, boy, don't take offence at the first word your cousin says. She meant no harm. Indeed, I didn't. I was so pleased to find you different. Is what my father says true? Will you really come here often? Well, I... Oh, please, I'd be so grateful. It's so strange and frightening here. Ah, here's Harriton with the food. Sit you both down at the table. Nothing makes people better acquainted than sharing a meal together. Put it down before him, Harriton, and wait upon the young lady and gentleman, your cousins. See your cousin too, Linton. Only by marriage. That doesn't mean anything. Be careful with that child, clumsy. You've splashed my clothes. Ah, oh, lucky. Next time, it'll be more than my clothes. Tell me about London, Linton. What's it like? Are the ladies' dresses very beautiful? Oh, yes. Very gay and beautiful. Would they be prettier than mine? Yours? <laughs> Good heavens, yes. They'd laugh at you if you appeared in clothes like that in London. Laugh at me? Here, you leave her alone. She'd be all right as she is. As for you, my dear cousin Harriton, they wouldn't even understand you in London. They'd think you were a heathen. They are not standing mocking me. If our values are skin, they'll... Harriton! Won't go to your work. But you heard what he said. I said go to your work. And look to Miss Catherine's pony, see if it's fit to carry her home. And look for my mother while you're in the yard. Tell her to come indoors. No, look for thyself. I'll do not for thee. I wish she'd come in. Could she have gone walking, sir? How could she in this snow? Why, even I, who know every yard of the place, can scarce get beyond my own fields. There she is now, knocking to be let in. Finish your meal, both of you, then Miss Linton must go home. Mr. Heathcliff! Mr. Heathcliff! Oh, that's Ellen. Oh, Mr. Heathcliff. Don't worry, Ellen. If you're looking for Miss Catherine, we have her safe and sound. Oh, don't scold me, Ellen. I couldn't help it. My pony hurt himself, and Mr. Heathcliff brought me inside to meet my new cousin. This is Linton Heathcliff, Ellen. He <laughs> arrived today with his mother from London. Linton Heathcliff. What ails you, Ellen? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. Now I know who it was. 
I thought I knew her. Oh, you poor, poor lad. Lynn, what is it? What's happened? In the drifts, sir, on the road to the Grange. The snow had almost covered her, but I saw a glimpse of her cloak. Who? Oh. I know now who it was. Miss Isabella. Mother, I touched her. She was... Mr. Heathcliff, you must send men at uh, once. One moment, Ellen. You're not afraid of words. Tell me plainly. Is she alive? Tell me. No. I don't believe it. She can't be dead. She wouldn't leave me in this horrible place. I'm going to find her. I'm going to bring her back. Stop. Let me go. Let me go. I must find her. You don't know what you're doing. You can't pitch yourself against the elements. You'll kill yourself as well. I don't care. I'd rather be dead than stay here without her. I've no one else but her. You don't care about me. You hate me like you hated her. You drove her to her death. Stop. <laughs> And that'll teach you to speak of things you know nothing of. You struck him. You struck him when he was suffering and didn't know what he was saying. You knew well enough. Now I know it's true. You're cruel and vicious. But you shan't hurt poor Linton. I won't let you. Oh, Catherine, help me. Help me. Don't leave me here. I won't. I'm taking you back home with me. Papa will take you in and let you live with us. Oh, Miss Catherine. He will, Ellen. I know he will. <laughs> Yes, you may laugh, Mr. Heathcliff, but I won't let you hurt Paul Linton again. Tell her, Ellen. Miss Catherine, love, it's no good. You can't do this. But Papa won't mind. No, love, I know he wouldn't, but Mr. Heathcliff is the boy's father. You can't take him away from him. You mean Linton has to stay? Yes, Miss Catherine, he has to stay. If you don't mind, Miss Linton, I should like to speak to my son alone. Take her away, Ellen. Allerton will give her a pony. No, no. Catherine, don't leave me. Don't leave me alone with him. I must go, Linton. Come along, Miss Catherine. Then promise you'll come back and see me. You're the only friend I have. She can't come and see you, Master Heathcliff. Her father forbade her to come here ever. It's true, Linton. But I'll speak to Papa. I'll tell him how your father's cruel to you. Take her away, Ellen. Miss Catherine. I will, Linton. I'll tell him everything, I promise. He'll come and take you away. Catherine. Catherine! And stop calling after her. She's gone. Now sit up and listen to me. Oh, don't shrink from it, boy. I'm not going to touch you. Now heed what I say. Would you like to see Miss Catherine again? She said she couldn't come. You leave that to me. You like her, don't you? Answer me. Yes, Father. And how would you like to have her with you all the time? To live here. To live here? But she couldn't. She'd have to, Linton. If you married her. Married her? You'd like that, wouldn't you? She'd be with you all the time. Nurse you when you were ill. And wait on you and do your bidding. But she might not wish to marry me. You'd do as I direct and you shall have her. She's a desirable girl, Linton. And soon she'll be a beautiful woman. Look at me, boy. Doesn't this arouse a spark of passion in you? Don't be angry with me, please, Father, but I was thinking of my mother. Won't you please send somebody to find her and bring yes, her back? Yes, yes, it shall be done. Do it now, sir. Please do it now. I loved her so. Think how you would feel if someone you loved was lying dead out there and you knew you'd never hear her voice again. That she was lost to you forever. How dare you? <laughs> Who taught you to pry into my mind like that? Who taught you? Father, you're hurting my arm. I don't know what you mean. Don't look at me like that. You frighten me. Get out of my sight. Go to your room. But, but Father, please. What you ask shall be done, but you leave me. Yes, Father. Never give me rest. I think of you daily, hourly. I'm in torment, yet you never come to me. Oh, Cassie. My heart's darling, why do you never come? Come to me, Cassie, or leave me in peace. Father, Father, come quickly. There's something wrong in the room next to mine. What? There was a crash at the ground. 
I think Mr. Earnshaw's... What? Out of my way. Hindley. Hindley, what's happened? Open this door. Hindley, open the door. Unlock it, you fool, or I'll break it down. Stand back, Linton. I'll, I'll have to break it down. He fool might have done himself a mischief. Hindley. Hindley. Mr. Hindley was found dead in his room. And death must have been for him a blessed relief from his degradation and misery. But at the Grange, free for so long from all the storms that blew about Wuthering Heights, a new trouble was brewing for us. My young Miss Catherine was forever running off to see her cousin Linton. True, she always stayed outside the house, but Linton's plea was forever the same. Please, Catherine, please do. What harm can there be? It's no use, Linton. I told you before. I can't come inside. But why not, Catherine? My father's not here. He'll never know you came. It's not your father I'm thinking of. It's mine. He forbade me to come here and I disobeyed him once. I won't do it again. I see what it is. You didn't mind disobeying him when it was to gratify a whim of your own, when you wanted to find out what Wuthering Heights was like. But you won't disobey him again, no matter how much it would help me. Help you, Master Linton? Now, how can Miss Catherine's coming into the house help you? Well, it, it's so bitterly lonely here, Catherine, with only Harriton to talk to. He says nothing but abuse. Well, perhaps if you talk fairer to him, Master Linton, he might talk fairer to you. Now, Miss Catherine, we must go home. You've been out quite long enough. No, Catherine, do stay a little longer, please. Very well, Linton. But let's go up on the moors again. I can't. It's too cold for me. Cold? Why, look at the sun. And it won't set for another hour. Why, well, the sharp winds take my breath. It's all very well for you. You can run and keep warm. Our walk today is utterly exhausting. Well, if you're as bad as that, Master Linton, then the best thing you can do is go indoors and get some rest. Now, come away, Miss Catherine Do. I must go, Linton. I'll come again at the same time tomorrow. <coughs> <coughs> Linton, dear. <coughs> Linton. It's all your fault. Help me into the house. Linton. <coughs> Only as far as the kitchen. Can't you even do that for me? Oh, Miss Catherine. <coughs> all right, Linton. <coughs> Lean on me. Take his other arm, Ellen. <coughs> now, Linton, gently. Gently. That's right. Open the door, <coughs> Ellen. <coughs> Help me to a chair. Get me a glass of water. Oh, you've done it before, Miss Catherine. Remember your father. Oh, let me fetch a servant. But, Ellen, it's such a little thing. Here you are, Linton. Drink this and sit quietly. Uh, hold it for me. My hands are shaking. Upon my word, Master Linton, anyone would think you were helpless. Oh, don't scold him, Ellen. He is well. I'm sorry I upset you, Linton. I didn't think my coming in meant so much to you. You will stay for a little while now, won't you, Catherine? I'm afraid of meeting Mr. Heathcliff. I dislike him so much. He won't be back for us. He went to Gimmerton. Miss Catherine, you mustn't. Oh, Ellen, what can a few minutes matter? Would you like me to read to you, Linton? Oh, very well. I've got a book of poems in my pocket. I brought them to read to you on the moors, only you wouldn't stay there. I'll read you Chevy Chase. It's my favorite. Miss Catherine, look. Someone's coming. It's Harriton. Harriton? Oh, Linton, why didn't you tell me he was about? Oh, what does it matter? Don't you see? He'll tell your father of my coming here. Oh. oh, I didn't know. Good day to you, Miss Catherine. Good day, Harriton. Oh, I didn't think to see you here again, Miss Catherine. Oh, she's no right to be here, Harriton. She's disobeyed her father. And we'd take it as a kindness if you'd say nothing about it to Heathcliff. But... If he axes me. You can hold your tongue, can't you? Aye. I reckon I can. It's no affair of mine, and I'll do now to harm you. That's good of you, Harriton. Good of him? What's good about it? 
I should think he'd be as glad to cross Mr. Heathcliff as any of us. Why should I be? What's Master done to me? Don't call him that. You make me even more ashamed that you're my cousin. What else should I call him? He be my master. Hareton, come here. I want to show you something. Where are you taking me? Just here outside the door. Now, look up. Do you see the writing on that stone? I, I see something written there. But don't you see what it says? It's such queer writing. Oh, I'll read it for you. It says, Harriton Earnshaw, 1500. My name, Harrington Earnshaw. Yes. It means your ancestors built this house more than 300 years ago. It's yours, Harrington, by right and birthright. Haven't you ever looked up at that stone and thought so? Oh, shut that door and come inside. Such a draft. What's the good of talking to him like that? Don't you know he can't even read or write? Oh, Harriton, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Nay, uh, it's all right. I don't heed what he says. But anyways, it isn't true. Not true? You mean you can? Don't believe him. He's lying. Why, when my mother and I came here... That was six weeks ago. Since then, I've been teaching myself a bit. Oh, then read something. Here's an easy poem, Chevy Chase. Well, Please, I... Please, Harriton. I want to hear you. Oh, go on. God prosper long, our noble king, our lives and safe ties. Safeties. <laughs> safeties all. A woeful hunting once there did in Chevy Chase. Be fall. That's good, Harriton. Go on. To drive the deer with <laughs> hound and horn, Earl Percy took his way. The child may he that is unborn, the hunting of that day. The stout Earl of North, um, the, 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 Land. <laughs> Miss Catherine, for shame. It's cruel of you to laugh when the poor lad is doing his best. I know. I'm sorry, Harriton. I didn't mean to laugh, but you were so funny. Funny? But you asked me to read to you. So she could laugh at you, you poor wicked clown. No, Linton, that's not true. I didn't do it for that, Harriton. No, but I think you did. I think he speaks the truth for once. No, Harriton, I didn't. I never thought as you'd make game of me, Miss Catherine. I only tried to teach myself so that you'd not despise me like you did when you first saw me. I'd not have laughed at thee, Miss Catherine. No, not for all the world. You... you mustn't call me Miss Catherine, Harriton. You're my cousin. I'm now to thee. You've shown it all too plainly. Well, I've done with trying to please you. If you prefer that popping jay, you can have him. And devil take me if I stir a finger to help you out of the toil he's put you in. What do you mean? Uh, you can ask, but I'll not answer. Ask him if he'll tell you. Ellen, let's go. We've stayed too long already. Good evening, Ellen. Mm. Well, Catherine, I'm privileged to have you in my house again so soon. We were just leaving, Mr. Heathcliff. Papa will be worrying about me. Yes, I have no doubt he will. Why have you locked that door, Mr. Heathcliff? For a very simple reason, Ellen. So that no one can get out. I have a mind to be hospitable today. You shall eat and drink with me before you go. And I don't see what you can find to give us while I take our guests into the parlor. Come, Catherine. Let me take your arm. Zilla and Joseph are away to Gimmerton today, so Harriton must look after you. Let go of me. I won't eat and drink here. 
Give me that key. In this house, you'll find that one may ask and not be given. Now, in here. Ah, there's a good fire here. Now, come and sit by it. Linton, put on a log. Yes, sir. I won't be ordered about by you. I'm not your son or Harriton. Give me that key. <laughs> then I'll make you. <laughs> Give it me. <laughs> Mr. Heathcliff. Catherine, has he hurt you? You'll find I know how to treat children before you leave here. Oh, Let me stop see. fussing over her, Ellen. She's not hurt. Sit up, Catherine, and listen to what I have to say to you. Mr. Heathcliff, this is serious. She must go to her father. He's ill, and every hour that she's away will fret him. And yet she broke her promise to him a second time. I couldn't help it. Linton pleaded so hard for me to come in. Yes, Linton did well. He knew he'd better persuade you or be answerable to me. To you? Linton, what does he mean? Catherine, he made me do it. You mean it was a trap? Linton, answer me. Was it a trap? You can call it that if you like. I wanted you fast under my roof, and with Linton's help, I got you. What do you want her for? What's Miss Catherine to you? My future daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law? I'm giving you a husband, Catherine. My son. Linton? There he is. Look at him and admire him. You can't do this, Mr. Heathcliff. There's a law in the land, even though we live in this out-of-the-way place. And I myself will inform against to you. To inform against me, Ellen, you will have first to get out of this house, which you won't find so easy. But you can't keep us here indefinitely. I have no wish to. As soon as Catherine has married Linton, she can go home. And if I won't marry him... Then you stay here until you do. I can detain you and Ellen quite concealed here. Nor shall I have any difficulty in diverting inquiries. But my father, he doesn't know where I am. I thought not. And he's bound to suffer, I'm afraid. He'll probably conclude you grew weary of nursing a sick man and ran off for a little amusement. It's a pity his last hours will be so embittered. His last hours? Helen, is it true? Is Papa as ill as that? Mr. Heathcliff, how could you be so cruel? She didn't know. He wanted to keep it from you, love. He wouldn't let us tell you. And it is true. Oh, Miss Catherine, my love, don't take it to heart so. <laughs> Go away, please, Ellen. Leave me alone. <laughs> ah, here's Harriton. You brought the food, good. Now take Mrs. Dean upstairs, Harriton, and show her the quarters we've prepared for her. I'll not leave Miss Catherine. You'd better come. Go with him, Ellen. It's no use fighting against them. I don't care what they do to me now. It's my father's old room. You know what you say where that is. You go upstairs too, Linton. I'd like to say a word to Catherine, sir, to ask her forgiveness. You'll not get it from her at this moment. Tomorrow you'll be married to her, then you can dispense with it. Now go. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Catherine. Good night. There's food and drink here if you want it. No, thank you. As you please. Well, I have matters to attend to. Mr. Heathcliff. Yes? If I promise to do as you say, to marry Linton, will you let me go home tonight? No. But my father will be sick with worry. Mr. Heathcliff, please. Let go of me. You felt the weight of my hand before. Do you want to feel it again? But if he thinks I left him on purpose, if he dies before I return, how could I bear to go on living? I have lived with everything torn from me. You do as I do. If you have a mind to sleep, you can rest down here. Or if you prefer company, you can go to Linton. You'll be man and wife tomorrow, so what matter if you anticipate the ceremony a little? No, don't look towards the window. I put those bars up in anticipation. And this door will be locked. So don't waste your time in trying to escape. <laughs> oh, Papa. Papa. Forgive me, please. Oh, dear God, please let me see him again. <laughs>
Who's there? Who is it? Let me in. Let me in. Who are you? What do you want? Let me in. Let me in. I, I can't. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, what the devil do you mean by making that confounded noise? There was someone at the window tapping on it, trying to get in. What? Then she beat on it with her fist and called out, let me in. Was, was it a woman? Yes. I spoke to her and then she disappeared. What was she like? Young, dark, very beautiful, but also pale. Oh. Mr. Heathcliff. What is it? Are you ill? Leave me. Go to Ellen. Am I never to be obeyed? Go, I say, leave me in peace. Yes, yes. Kathy? Kathy, my heart's darling. I'm here. Come to me. Oh, come to me, Kathy! I've waited so long. Why did you show yourself to her and not to me? Have you forgotten me so completely that you make no sign? I pour out my soul to you nightly and I cannot reach you. If only I could see you, hear the echo of your voice. Oh, Kathy, why have you forsaken me? In the following day, Miss Catherine and her cousin were married. Yet, strangely enough, Mr. Heathcliff still kept her locked up at the Heights. It seemed he had some purpose in so doing. But what it was, we were yet to find out. Oh, shut that door, do! It's cold enough in here as it is. What be the matter with you? I don't know. I think I'm ill. I never know thee when they weren't. <sighs> Catherine was crying again all last night. I can't think why father doesn't let her go home. Can do no harm now we're married. What's that you're mending? The bridle of Miss Catherine's pony. You were weak. You would have given way at any time. <laughs> She'll not thank you for doing it. It's not for thanks I'm doing it. Where's Heathcliff? He went up to Gimmerton before I was awake. He said he had some business to attend to. Oh, good morning, Miss Catherine. Good morning, Harrington. I'm mending your pony's bridle for you, so you can ride in safety. Is my pony all right? You miss his daily ride with me? Nay, yeah, he's in good shape. I've been exercising him in the yard for you. He's out there now. You can see him from the window. He's in the yard? Aye. Oh, where's that bit of thong I had? I must have left it in the kitchen. I'll get it for you, Harrison. Look out! She's making off! Stop her, Harrison! Don't try none of that, Miss Catherine. <laughs> Come back into parlour quietly. Oh, Harrison, let me go. Please let me go. I'll come back again when I've seen my father, I promise. I wouldn't trust our promises. You made a fool of me once, but you'll not do it a second time. Sit you down quietly. Heathcliff shall know of this when he gets back. Heathcliff is back. What am I to know of? I tried to get away. Harriton stopped me. Good lad, I'm grateful to you, Harriton. I'm not ready to let her go, yet. Then my father... Well? You've told me what I dared not ask you, Mr. Heathcliff. My father is still living. Go to your room. I've matters to discuss with Linton. Very well. <laughs> well, well, well. Ah, to think she goes now without words or argument. I go because you're stronger than I am and can make me if I refuse. Not because I'm afraid of you. 
Go to your work, Carriton. What I have to say is between my son and me. What's this rubbish on the table? Miss Catherine's bridle. I were mending it for her. I see. Go to your work. I will that. Have you heard news of Mr. Linton, sir? Yes, I met Dr. Kenneth on the way from Gimmerton. He's failing fast. Another day he thinks at most. Why, has she been begging you to let her go? Oh, last night again. She kept me awake for hours. <laughs> Promised me anything if only I'd get the key for her. But I wouldn't, Father. I obeyed you in everything. But less from love than from fear, eh, Linton? Well, you can obey me in one thing more and I've finished. I've been to see the lawyer at Gimmerton. We'll put Mr. Edgar Linton's affairs in order for him. Mr. Linton's? But how can you do that, sir? He wishes to make another will. This time leaving everything away from Catherine if she marries you. Can he do that, sir? Yes. Oh, yes. But when I married Catherine, you said that yes, I should... Wait, wait. It's not done yet. Nor, in spite of Mr. Edgar Linton's wishes, will it ever be. How do you know of this, Father? <laughs> Shall we say the lawyer at Gimmerton is a very good friend of mine? I see. Somehow Linton suspects that we have Catherine here. He sent for the lawyer yesterday. But, but you said the thing was not yet Nor done. is it. The lawyer was uncommonly busy yesterday and unable to call at the Grange. He will continue to be unaccountably busy until... It's too late. And under the present will, all Mr. Linton's property will come to me as Catherine's husband. All to you. That pleases you, does it, boy? Yes, Father. Very much. Good. Then you can show your gratitude by doing something for me. Get the pen and ink and sit down at the table. But, but what is it, sir? What am I signing? Your will. My will? You'll be master of much property shortly, Linton. Such people have responsibilities. Possessions must be carefully disposed of. Put your name to it, boy. I, I know it's stupid of me, but but somehow I always thought that... Well, only old people made wills, not young ones. Am I very ill, Father? Ill? No, of course not. I wouldn't say you're well, but all you need is a milder temperature... When you get to the Grange, you'll be improved out of all knowledge. Sign the paper, boy, and don't keep me waiting any longer. But, but who am I leaving them my property to? Is it to Catherine? No. Who, then? To me. To you? But you're years older than I am. You couldn't hope to inherit it unless... unless you thought I was going to die. And that's what you do think. You think I'm going to die? Linton. I won't sign it. I won't. I won't. Linton, I... listen to me. <laughs> listen. Of course I don't think you're going to die. Nothing was further from my mind. If to make a will were a symptom of death, I should have been a dead man these 20 years. All I wish to do is to make provision against accident that none of us is proof against. A bolting horse, a carriage overturning, such things as those, that's all I meant. Is that really true, sir? Is that honestly all you meant? To be sure it was. Still, you're upset. I'll trouble you with it no further. Another day will do as well. No, no I'll sign it, Father. I'm sorry I behaved badly. Where do I put my name? Just there. Does Catherine know I shall get all her money? I imagine not. She's been so horrid to me since you made her stay here. I should like to tell her. May I, Father? If you wish to. I'm going to the fields. The key is in the door. Lock it after me and see she doesn't try to get away again. I shan't let her go, Father. I shall keep the key safe in my pocket. And however much she pleads with me, I won't open the door for her. I'll be back later. F Father. Well? You are pleased with me, aren't you? I've done what you wanted. Lock the door after me, remember? Catherine? Father and Harriton have gone now. You can come in. 
Where have Mr. Heathcliff and Harrison gone? To the fields. They won't be home till supper time. And it's no use you looking at the door. It's locked. And I've got the key. Linton, let me go to my father. All I want to do is see him just once more and let him know I'm safe. I promise I'll come back again. I swear I will. Linton, you, you've never seen my father, have you? He's very like your mother was. Look, he has a miniature of him I have in this locket. It's the last thing he ever gave me. But you may have it, Linton, if you will let me go to him. Back to your father! Don't! Linton, don't! Take your foot off it! You're destroying it! My father's picture. Why did you do that, Linton? I was going to give it to you. Give it to me? You've nothing to give me. You don't possess anything. That portrait was mine already. Everything you have is mine. Yours? You didn't know that, did you? My father told me this morning. A wife property belongs to her husband. Well, we are man and wife. So all your father owns will come to me. I should be rich, not you. Why should I let you go to him? I want him to die and quickly see you, beast. I hate you. You don't deserve any pity. Give me that key. If you don't, I'll take it from you. I'm stronger than you are, and I'll make you give it up. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me. No. Oh. Oh. On my handkerchief. Oh, Linton. He, he lied to me. He, he knew I was going to die. It wasn't for me. He did those things. It was for himself. What are you saying, Linton? What things? He said I would grow well and strong when I went to the Grange. And all the time he knew I couldn't live. He cheated me when he knew I was dying. Oh, don't talk, <coughs> Linton. <coughs> Here's the key. Catherine, go to your father. Oh. Oh, Linton. Don't hit me too much, Catherine. I couldn't stand against Heathcliff. I know that, Linton. I don't hate you. <coughs> Take your pony and ride to your father. But what will Heathcliff do to you when he finds out? <coughs> he can't do much, can he? He's been forestalled. <coughs> Go before they come back. Thank you. <coughs> Dear Linton. Catherine. Yes. Come back to me, please. I'm afraid to die alone. Come back to me. I will come back, Linton. I promise. My little mistress did reach her father in time. And Mr. Edgar died happy with her by his side. And true to her word, she returned to Wuthering Heights to stay by poor young Linton's bedside. His release came shortly afterwards. And he was laid upon the heath to rest. Heathcliff now had all he wanted. The Grange, the Heights and all of Catherine's property. For him, it seemed, the wheel had come full circle. Supper's ready, Mr. Heathcliff. Now, come and take your place at table, Miss Catherine, love. Don't let Mr. Heathcliff see you moping about like this. I don't want anything to eat. Now, don't let's have this scene at every meal. If you vex Mr. Heathcliff, he'll only send me away. And you'll be lonelier than ever. I'm sorry, Ellen. I'll come. That's right, love. Ellen, do you think I shall die young? Bless my soul, what a question to ask. No, of course you won't. What are you doing thinking about death at your age? Linton was as young as I am and he died. So did poor Papa. 
And he was no older than Mr. Heathcliff. Well, they were both ill, Miss Catherine. You are strong and well. I wish I weren't. Oh, Ellen, I wish so passionately I weren't. Every night, I pray that it may be my last, that I won't wake up again. But my prayers are never answered. I should think not, indeed. God knows better than to answer a wicked prayer like that. I think God has forgotten Wuthering Heights. Or Heathcliff has driven him from it. Hurry along, Harrison. Hush, they're coming now. Don't you let Mr. Heathcliff hear you talking like that. Help me pass the dishes round. Welcome to the table, Mr. Heathcliff. You must be famished. You never came in to dinner. What kept you? I had... I had an errand. Well... I'll do justice to your food now, Ellen. Oh, so I should think. Without a bite inside you since yesterday. Now, pass that to Harriton, Miss Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. And where have you been working, Harriton? I've been in stables. There was no need to tell us that. Why not? We can smell you from here. Didn't it occur to you to wash before you sat down to supper? No, it won't be need. It'd be clean, Mook. <laughs> Isn't he amazing, Ellen? He's just like a dog or a cart horse. He does his work, eats his food and goes to sleep. I don't believe he ever thinks at all. Do you think, Harriton? And if you do, what do you think about? Miss Catherine, give over baiting him. It isn't kind. Has he ever been kind to me? I tried, Miss Catherine. But you wouldn't let me be. And then you laughed at me. And I shall laugh at you again when I don't sicken with disgust at the sight of you. You and Earnshaw. Who would think the blood of my mother ran in your veins? I took you for a servant when I first saw you, and that is all you're fit to be, a servant. Maybe you're right, Miss Catherine. I'm sorry I offended you by sitting down like this, but when I came from stables, I had something on my mind I thought would please you. And what was that, Harriton? No, it is no matter now. I'll take my plate into the kitchen, Ellen. I'll not offend her with my presence here. That was wrong of you, Miss Catherine. You've hurt him badly. I don't care. He's hurt me many times. Oh, let me fill your plate again, Mr. Heathcliff. Why, you've not touched your food. Mr. Heathcliff. Well... You're not eating. You said you were hungry. Yes, I am. It's strange. I want food, yet... Seems I'm constrained from eating. Constrained? Who constrains you? I think... I think it's Cathy. Miss Catherine? Oh, but she didn't... No. Be... Not Catherine. Cathy. Heathcliff, you must be ill. Miss Catherine, run and fetch No, I want no one. But tell her to go away. I, will... I wish to speak to you alone. Go upstairs, Catherine, love. Mr. Heathcliff wishes it. Very well. Oh, Mr. Heathcliff, this is either cold or fever. Oh, this comes of not eating all day. Longer than that, Ellen. Longer? It's five days since I've eaten. Five days? But I packed your food for you to take to the hills with you. I never touched it. Oh, Mr. Heathcliff, what nonsense is this? Are you trying to kill yourself? I do nothing but what I seem to be bidden. But who bids you? Kathy. I've s seen her, Ellen. Miss Kathy? Yeah. At last, after all these years, she's shown herself to me again. I never told you what I did when Edgar Linton died, did I? But I'll tell you now. I knew they would lay him beside her. He, who never loved her with a quarter of the love I did. You malign him, Mr. Heathcliff. He loved her dearly. As much as was in his nature, I suppose. But we shall never agree on that, Ellen, so let's not speak of it. It's not to the purpose. I 
Could not bear that he should reach her before I did. So I bribed the sexton who was digging Linton's grave to remove the earth from her coffin. Then I opened it. You opened it? I saw her face. Unchanged. Beautiful as always. The years have not touched it. Then I struck one side of the coffin loose and I bade the sexton cover it up again. That was sacrilegious of you. Why should you do such a thing? Because I have a promise to extract from you, Ellen. When I am dead, swear you will see that I am led by Cathy on the opposite side to Linton. I've already arranged with the sexton to pull away the side of my coffin so that my dust shall mingle with hers. And when Edgar Linton gets to us, he'll not know which is which. This is wicked talk, Mr. Heathcliff. You should have been ashamed to disturb the dead. I disturbed nobody, and I gave some ease to myself. Disturb her? She's disturbed me night and day for 18 years incessantly, remorselessly. Until last night. Last night? I dreamt that I was sleeping the last sleep beside her. With my heart stopped and my cheek frozen against hers. And it was in this dream that you saw her? No. In my waking hours. She's here with us now. You don't see her, Ellen. She's by the settle where she used to sit. You're mistaken, Mr. Heathcliff. There's no one there. It's but a vague and fugitive vision. Even to me, she's not yet shown herself completely. But she will come. I've bent my mind and soul to that one single purpose of recalling her. I shall bring her back from the dead, Ellen. By sheer force of will, I'll bring her back. Now she's gone again. That's how she torments me. It's a strange way of killing. Not by inches, but by fractions of hairbreadths for 18 years. Ah! Mr. Heathcliff, what is it? She's just beyond the house. She's waiting for me. I must go to her. Oh, Mr. Heathcliff, don't go out again in this bitter wind. I can't stay. She's waiting for me. I think she'll let me see her more distinctly this time. Don't look at me like that, Ellen. I'm not a mad nor a fool. I know what I'm doing. Oh, she may not be there. She's disappointed you so often. But I must go. I must go whenever she calls me. Cathy, stay for me this time. Please stay. Cathy? 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 Helen! What is he saying? Why did he look so strange? He's imagining things. They're driving him distracted. I'm going to send for Dr. Kenneth. He needs proper attention. One of the servants can go and be back in half an hour. Helen, as you go, will you ask Harriton to come in to me? Harriton? I doubt he'll come. You've hurt him really badly this time. I know. I'm sorry. But don't you see, I only do it... Because I've been so badly hurt myself. I'd like to be friends with Harriton. Honestly, I would. And I have a present for him. Ask him, please, Ellen, to come in. Very well, love. And he has a good heart. Maybe he'll forgive you. To Harriton Earnshaw. From his friend and cousin, Catherine Linton. Oh, Harriton? 
Erin said you wanted to see me. What do you want? To ask your forgiveness, Harriton. I'm sorry I was unkind to you just now. Will you forgive me, please? No. I've tried to be kind to you and had not but hard words for it. I know that, Harriton. I've said I'm sorry. What more can I say? I want to be friends with you now, if you let me. Look, I brought this book down for you. Will you accept it from me, Harriton? I've written your name in it, see? Well, read what I've written. So, you're up to your tricks again, are you? I don't know what you mean. Don't lie to me. You want me to read what you've written here so you can hear me make mistakes and laugh at me again? No, Harriton. That's not true. I was a good sport to you, weren't I? It was nothing to you the hours I spent trying to spell out the words so you wouldn't be ashamed of me. All you could do was to mock at me for it. I'm ashamed I did that, Harriton. I'll never mock you again. Truly, I won't. Look. To Harriton Earnshaw, from his friend and cousin, Catherine Linton. Won't you take it? Please, Harriton. Aye, I'll take it. And I'll show you what I think of it. That <gasps> gets to me. Don't throw it in the fire. Oh, oh Catherine. Catherine. You're badly hurt. I would not have had you hurt yourself for all the world. You're too dear to me. Oh, that's a bad burn. I'll get some oil. That'll soothe it. It doesn't hurt me now, Harriton. Yeah, but it must. I've forgotten it. Because you said I was dear to you. I... I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry, Harriton, if you meant it. Did you mean it? Am I dear to you? I think of you day and night. Don't laugh at me for it. Laugh at you? Oh, Harriton. Nay, <laughs> now, nay, you mustn't cry. I wasn't meaning to offend you. I'll stay out of your road in future. I know I'm not for you. Oh, don't say that, Harriton. I think we need each other. And don't tease me now, Catherine. I can't bear it if you tease me now. I'm not teasing you, Harrison. I mean it. Oh, oh Cathy. I've ached for you. And it seems so hopeless. You were that dainty and clever and... And I... I... I I did try to make myself better. You've no notion how I tried. I'll teach you, Harrison. If you let me. Let you? Oh, there's no pains I wouldn't spare to fit myself for you. Will you... Will you give me the book now? Yes, Harrison. With my love. What are you two doing here? I told you both to go away. Surely I have a right to be here. I've nowhere else to go. You've taken away my house and land. Your house and land? Yes. Mine and Harrison's too. We're friends now. And I shall tell him how you robbed him. You get out of my sight. Go before I strike you. You dare not strike me again. Harrison won't let you. Aye, oh, she's right. I'll not let you strike her. Oh, that's how it is. You and he. Yes. I could break you both yet. But somehow it means nothing to me anymore. Take it away from me. Get you gone, both of you. Come, Catherine. Come and see the present that I have for you. My spaniel, Juno, is whelped, and, and I saved the best puppy for you. Oh, Harriet. It's a brave little dog. You'll not find a better in all the country. Uh, Helen. Helen! Oh, Mr. Heathcliff, you're back. She wasn't there. She bade me come back to the house. Did you mark Harriton and Catherine just now? 
I did. And dissension seems all over between them. Thank God. All over. And I no longer care. This is a poor conclusion, is it not, Ellen? I get levers and mattocks to demolish two houses, and when everything's ready and in my power, I have no interest in revenge. Ellen, there's a change approaching. It's already cast its shadow upon me. What can you mean by a change, Mr. Heathcliff? I shall not know until it comes. But I think it's very near. Mr. Heathcliff, you're not still thinking of Miss Cathy. When have I ever ceased to think of her? Yes. Yeah. She's approaching me now. She is coming at last. In all the glory of her young beauty. To Wuthering Heights. You need not look so frightened, Ellen. I'm not mad. But for the first time in my life, I think I'm content. Mr. Heathcliff. Now, let me speak now, Ellen. For we shall never meet again. Never meet again? I want you to go away. All of you. And leave me here alone. But you're ill. You're not fit to be by I yourself. I shall not be by myself. She will be here. She waits only for you to go. I've sent for Dr. Kenneth, sir. He should be here in an hour. Then he will waste his journey. Don't thwart me in this, Ellen, or you'll make me angry. And I don't wish to be angry now. Go to the Grange. It's habitable. I left a servant there. I don't like leaving you, Mr. Heathcliff. You look so strange. That's hardly to be wondered at. For 18 years I've been in hell. Now I'm within sight of my heaven. <laughs> Why, Ellen? You're not crying for me, are you? I thought you'd dislike me. I think for the first time in my life, I'm beginning to understand you. Perhaps. I shall come back in the morning to see how you are. If you wish. Good night, Mr. Heathcliff. Goodbye, Ellen. They're gone, Kathy. I'm all alone here, waiting. You're outside the house, aren't you? Ready to come to me. Yes. yes, I can see you. Outside the window. Please, here. Kathy. Kathy, I'm here. Waiting. Come to me. Please, here. Kathy. Oh, Kathy, my heart's darling. You're here. Come to me. I can feel your hands in mine. I'm ready, Kathy, to go with you. Oh, Kathy, Kathy. We are together at last. And so we found him the next morning, stretched on the window seat, stiff and stark. His hands were clenched, as though they held another's in their grasp, and he seemed to smile. He was laid, as he requested, by the side of Catherine Linton, and perhaps he was united with her after death, as he never was in life. Often on a summer's day, I've lingered round the three headstones on the slope next the moor. 
watch the moths fluttering among the heath and harebells. Listen to the soft wind breathing through the grass. And wondered how any could ever imagine unquiet slumbers for the sleepers in that quiet earth. In Heathcliff by Emily Bronte, dramatized by Constance Cox from the novel Wuthering Heights and based upon a scenario by Rodney Ackland, the cast was as follows. Heathcliff, Paul Daneman, Isabella Heathcliff, Gudrun Ure, Catherine Linton, Meg Wynne Owen, Hindley Earnshaw, Nigel Graham, Ellen Dean, Hilda Schroeder, Linton Heathcliff, Tim Seeley, Harriton Earnshaw, Brian Hewlett, Kathy Patricia Gallimore. The play was produced by Norman Wright. <laughs>